All right, so welcome to the adventure. I'm super excited to be playing Beasts Bound and Down with these great people today, but let's meet them. Tell us about your character, Tyler. Uh, yeah, uh, today I will be playing Dirk Thoroughfare. Now, Dirk Thoroughfare in high school, he was the pride of uh, the Peabody High School football team. Parlayed that into a moderately successful professional wrestling career uh, for the CWC, and now he he makes ends meet as a uh, as a down on his luck stuntman and pyrotechnics expert. Yeah, hi, I'm Cole. Uh, this today I'm going to be playing Grand Funk, who is a uh, big barrel chested burly man uh who loves shooting guns he's a vigilante and a, a a past kung fu expert um and he's looking to find out uh who killed his family by poisoning them with super weed yeah i'm uh, i'm scott i'm playing with charlotte who is a um she's a young detective she's just sort of the girl next door uh with moxie in search of the truth uh solving mysteries with her encyclopedic memory and her trusty German Shepherd citizen. Uh, I'm going to be returning today as Huck Mansman, a kung fu good old boy. He's equal parts Evil Knievel and Chuck Norris with a heart of gold. He's just out for some respect in the world, some respect and maybe some more of that fame. All right, so... Beast Bound and Down starts with a few questions that I'm going to ask you guys. Answer honestly. I will be taking notes. Uh, whose bright idea was it to steal the beer truck? I mean, Why that sounds like a really good idea to me. Why did you wheeler full of uh, Gettysburg beer? Taste the history. <laughs> hmm. I, I think it was Charlotte's, ironically. <laughs> okay. I think we had to get across town really quick. I, I think it was a pressing issue. I, I, the fact that it was a beer truck is, uh, I think, merely a coincidence for Charlotte. But uh, we had to commandeer a vehicle real quick. Yeah, we Huck. Um, late. Huck, uh, Dirk, you two both have hot rides. Um, That's true. <laughs> why did you keep the Aloha Express after you stole it? We can always driving go bigger it down and Highway 18 in Marmot County is my question. <laughs> the Backwoods County adjoining to the city. In the 70s, every adventure took place in the city. It's at well, this not, point, which is the back country. Not everybody can fit on Jackie, my stunt bike. Mm -hmm. It really just fits me and Camille, the monkey. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, honestly, yeah, with, um, you know, Dirk has been happy uh, riding Genesis for a number of years, but uh, but when he saw that that big rig, uh, I think he just got a cartoon heart eyes and and had to have it. Of uh, course. All right. Um, what, Huck? Why did you go along with this plan? Because it seems super funny, and it seems like, I mean, we could do all kinds of things with a beer truck. Like we, we can get beer out of it for one. Um, <laughs> Very practical. And that's always a positive thing. There's a lot you can do in an office. Yeah. You can work or you can leave. Uh, <laughs> Grand Funk, why are you guys in Marmot County in the first place? Um, on the 4th of July. I think that we are uh, we're out of the city in order to throw the biggest 4th of July party that anyone has ever seen. Um, and it might not be going great right now, but we couldn't do it inside the city because there's too many rules and regulations. So we had to leave the city so we could throw the the most ridiculous Fourth of July rager of all time. All right. So um, Dirk or Huck, which one of you is behind the wheel right now? Uh, I think I'm behind the wheel. All right. Yeah. So Huck, you guys are driving breakneck pace down Highway 18. Who knows the location of where the party is going to be thrown? Um, I think this is a grand funk party. He's uh, he's throwing the, the greatest 4th of July party of all time so that he can uh, get everyone to show up and then maybe investigate with Charlotte uh, where this illegal super weed uh, that killed his family is from. <laughs> it's not regular weed, to be clear. It's like super extra. It's, it's X-Tech weed. weed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's, of course there is. 
really more of a 60s or 50s kind of paranoia, but uh, it works for me. <laughs> so, uh, Dirk, you were driving. You guys have uh, a- no, I think. You, um, uh, Hawk, you were driving. You yep. guys have a few minutes to talk about the party, and then we'll just uh, get into it when you, when uh, trouble arises, if it even does. <laughs> Everything could go perfectly fine. Who knows? Yeah, we anything have a fine episode. Any, yeah. Anything can happen, including nothing. Anything Cole, can do you happen. Think, uh, do you think that you've sports. told us why you're putting this party together, or have you led us all to believe that this is simply a 4th of July party, that's all? Um, I think I told Charlotte about it. I don't know if okay. I told you guys just because it's not necessary and yeah. I don't want it, I don't want anyone to blow my cover and, but we are also throwing a great party. So it's like, well, it's going to be fun no matter what. So yeah. I invite all my buds to come. Nice. All your rowdy friends. Yeah. Do you have, um, do you have suspects already that like we've invited to this? This is sort of like a honey pot. This is like a trap. This is a setup. This is a sting. This is a sting party. Um, yes, but I don't know that I'm smart enough to know who they are. I think, I think it is a sting party, but you're the sleuth. You, you tell me, uh, who it might've been. Well, obviously the mayor, he's the, he's our prime suspect. Okay, cool. Yeah. The mayor. But the mayor. Okay. So you're trying to get the mayor of the city, his honor, mayor Knoxford spelled H I Z Z O N E R. He's honor the mayor <laughs> out to Marmot con- con- uh, County. For uh, a Fourth of July party, all right, yeah. and and uh, and also his cadre. And if we can poke yeah. around and ask them some questions, uh, see if this then... ties into organized crime on the present yeah. in the seventies. Mm-hmm. For sure, that mayor's dirty. You know all right, I know? so you guys like stolen the beer truck. Uh, who's actually looked in the back of the beer truck most recently? Uh, I think I'm riding in the back of the beer truck. All right, so there are pallets of, oh, you know, it's okay. Okay. sixers. Um, For some reason, I, I imagined like a gas tanker, but it was filled with beer. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually great. Like, I don't know. I guess that's not how you transport beer. No, because Why then you, would you have no. to. Yeah, you get some very patient people with little hoses, and then they just bottle it up wherever you're driving it to. It's the world's yeah. biggest kegger. I don't know why I imagined that, but in my mind, it was just a tanker truck that was filled with what beer. If, what if it is that, and Grand Funk is just back there with, like, a floaty, you know? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting on top of it, just riding it like it's like a steel horse. <laughs> like your James Earl Jones and Dr. Strange love. Yes, exactly. Yes, 100%. All right, but what if you... <laughs> It's fun to think about. It's not fun to play, as okay. someone might say. So you were in the back of a kind of square truck. There might be a hatchet light. There's a big a big box that's just uh, tied down with, like, tire irons and extra security and a bunch of wrapped pallets, some of them darkly wrapped. Some of them, it's very clear that these are six packs of Gettysburg beer. Taste of history. You have to say that after every, everyone has to say that. After Until it stops being funny, which is very <laughs> soon. After you say what? After you say Gettysburg no, Beer, you have to taste the history. It's like mandated in their marketing slogan. Yeah, we are yeah. sponsored today. Um, <laughs> so, Funk, you hear the sound of uh, just a bunch of motorcycles um, closest because you're in the back and you guys aren't in a big argument probably over the radio or something. For some reason, I think that there's a controversy up there. Uh, do you want to, what do you do? Um, hmm. I throw open the back of the, the truck and scope almost, it out. You're, you're almost knocked back by the wind, but roll plus brains <laughs> to scope out a scene. All right, let's roll. Um, where's my dice roller here? Just woo, 60 miles per hour. <laughs> I got an eight. All right, ask a question. Um, what's the deal with these motorcycles? Where uh, on the list. scope out the scene? Um, who is the toughest person in the room? All right, so behind you, you see the Road Gators, uh, a notorious outlaw biker gang. They're they're uh, ready to get a diamond formation and. Uh, Hard case, uh, Houlihan is right up front. 
He's got a red mustache that goes down both sides and a pickle hobber helmet with a spike. He's got red, wet, and blue leathers on. And he sees you and he just looks pretty confused. What do you do? Um, hmm. Are they chasing? You guys might notice this through the uh, side mirrors. Are they chasing our truck or are they just behind us? Um, how would you tell that? Uh, if you watch them for a while, you could try and see if they, they follow you. But on a highway, there's really not a lot of, you know, visual difference between those two things. Uh, I'm going to wave to them and see what they do. <laughs> the bikers, one of the, they just turn their heads because they, they, one of them confusedly waves back because he doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, they don't seem threatening. What? They don't seem threatening. Interesting. Um, Dirk, uh, you in the far right seat uh, managed to see these guys through the, the double mirrors that you set up. Because mm -hmm. obviously trucks don't have rear view mirrors because you would reflect backwards into the thing you're carrying. So we'd <laughs> not give you any useful information. Right. Uh, hmm. What do you say? What do you I'm do? A, uh, I'm I'm a little suspicious of these uh, of of Hulahan and the gang. Mm -hmm. The road gators. Uh, yeah. Yes. The road gators. Thank you very much. Um, and let me see. How about you, Huck? You can see it from the far side. Yeah, I think I see that from the far side and. <clears throat> I, I imagine I know about the road gators. Yeah. Uh, as a as a good old boy, you've seen you, you're yeah. kind of at least aware of motorcycle gangs. Yeah, but I kind of look at them as just a bunch of punks who they just like to cause a lot of trouble. But they it's do. kind of it's. But I think that a lot of the times they're a lot more bark than they are bite. All right. The question yeah. is, if the road gators are. Uh, Going to see you guys as their next thrill or make you pay the road tax. Probably are carrying a significant amount of beer. We are carrying a, quite a bit but of valuable I, I am, cargo. I am going to, well, let's see. I don't know if this will work, actually. I'm trying to think about how tall a, uh, how high off the ground the cab would be. Because I'm thinking about if Dirk and I kind of get ready to, to do the old swing the doors out. And there you go. bop and knock these guys off their bikes. It would take out the first of them, but they're probably going to jump in the back rather than try and board the cabin. Oh, right, right. I see. Okay. You could try and put the pedal to the metal and just outrun them, you know? You're a professional yeah, driver. Yeah, let's do that, actually. Yeah. All right. Why don't you roll plus hustle? Maybe they want to Maybe they want to race. you get to add the power. Because you're a good old boy, I'm going to say you can add the power of the Aloha Express, which is uh, two. two. Just roll. So a, it has the trait sluggish, so if you're trying to stop and get it started, it's going to be a penalty. But uh, yeah, right yeah. now, on the highway, you got a lot of momentum riding behind you. Okay, cool. So that'll be a total of plus four, because I have a two in yep. hustle. Nice. Ooh. Oh, wait. Well, it's all right. Goodbye, Dice. Seven. So that's an 11. All right. So, Funk, you are able to maintain your seating as this truck roars forward, pushing you backwards. And uh, the road gators are getting smaller and smaller in the distance. All right. So if you keep it at 85 for, you know, and it doesn't, then the road doesn't go uphill at all. You should be able to be escaping them. Um, a little bit of rain is just a few droplets flatter your windshield. What's everyone up to? Go over to Charlotte. We haven't heard Charlotte yet. Uh, I think I'm like, I have my notebook open and I'm like uh, diagramming connections uh, in within the mayor's office to try and figure out who are the key people. Like, should we speak to his uh, secretary, personal assistant? Should nice. we speak to the, the, the councilman? Um, and trying to figure out like who I need to corner and uh, interrogate at the, uh, at the party to try to get a... a Trying to get some dirt on his honor the mayor. All right. So you hear a what must be a low, deep groan from in the cab, from uh from in the container itself. 
Uh, Funk, are you, what are you up to now, now that the gators are no longer waving at you? Do I also hear that? Uh, yeah, it's, it's quiet, because you can hear the road a lot more when you're further away, but uh, you can hear something. It's coming it, from the crate. Okay, um, I'm gonna investigate this crate. I wanna I want to uh, pop it open with my masculine strength and right. uh, see what's in there. All right. Is there so, is there uh, is there access from the cab into the? Can I like climb back into the? There uh, is what's supposed to just be an air thing, but there is a way at 80 I'm miles pretty, per hour. Squeeze between. I'm pretty. Uh, I'm pretty like t t small. I'm I'm uh, like a All 22 right. year old. So yeah, I mean, people don't moment, stop so. growing till they're thirty. So um, that's right. <laughs> if you want to get over there, why don't you roll plus hustle? Okay, rolling plus hustle. Uh, so just uh, for for our viewers at home, um, and not for me for any reason, I, when I'm rolling <laughs> uh, plus hustle, what am I rolling? Two d six. Two d six plus my hustle. Yep. My hustle is a zero. So All right. That's a five and a six. All right. Well, I, yeah, I was worried because you said a five and a six means that while Huck and Dirk are just talking about something, putting on Skinner or whatever, you were managed to sleep by, go through something that's really more of an access hatch and an air filter to end up right in front of uh, Grand Funk, who seems like he's going to try and rip this splintery crate open with his bare hands. And I'm going to see you have time to say something before he tries that. Try it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Funk, why don't you take one harm? Because this is what crowbars were invented for. <laughs> and uh, you are a vigilante and not a tough guy. So I don't have a crowbar. You might have. Yeah, there's probably some stuff back here if it's to be moving, you know. Oh, well, it's fine. <laughs> you managed to notice the crowbar in the darkness just after you pull out one of the big nails. Ah! <laughs> and um, there standing about eight and a half feet tall and covered in fur is none other than Bigfoot. Uh, okay. Slowly waking up from his torpor, which explains all the chains that are now not co kind of holding the crate in place, considering that you just burst the crate. Hmm. Um. Meanwhile... <laughs> Dirk, um, you are listening to the CB radio, mm -hmm. and um, you hear something about a stolen um, Gettysburg beer taste of history truck uh, last spotted on Highway 18. Uh-oh. And there's a reward out to whoever can get it back to the Gettysburg uh, brewery, which is here in Marmot County. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's what's going on with you. Uh, Huck, you okay. also hear this in the cabin. Yeah. How far out are we at this point from our destination? Um, 10 miles, maybe a few minutes. Okay. At the rate you're driving, not very long at all. Yeah. And ha have, have we completely you know, shaken the road? Have we completely shaken the road gators? They could have gone another way. They know the county better than you do. Okay. But they're not directly behind you. Okay. Hmm. What are you gonna do? What do you say? What do you do? Let's see. I'm. Um... You are our former stuntman. The problem, sure. the, for the most, the, the biggest problem is going to be when you have to make that off ramp turn at like ten miles per hour. Mm -hmm. And the roads here are not greatly maintained, so you might have to take it even slower. Which risks, not that they're going to catch you, but they're going to see which off-ramp you took. Be able right. to track you down that way. So you'll need to do something pretty reckless. But uh, you know no one's better with reckless than Huck Mansman. Of course, of course. Oh, God. Let's see. Also, Champion uh, is getting out of his seat and trying to follow uh, where Charlotte went through the cap. Citizen. His name's Citizen. Citizen. <laughs> I was wondering who champion was. Yeah, you guys are sharing the cab with a uh, like a fully grown German Shepherd. Oh, fantastic! Yes. Also a monkey. <laughs> oh yeah, that's also that. Yeah, I assume Holy the monkey shit. was in the back with Grand Funk. I don't know. <laughs> Could be. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, Grand Funk, as you guys decide how you're going to pull that off, Grand Funk, 
you see uh, Camille, the monkey, just, ah, 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 <laughs> pointing at Bigfoot. Um, <clears throat> what is Bigfoot doing? Like, he's just waking up? He's waking up groggily. Probably tranquilizing uh, the hell out of him. Hmm. I think I offer him a delicious beer. All right. <laughs> You're gonna get Bigfoot drunk. <laughs> mm -hmm. I just put a I just put a tiny I put a tall boy in his in his hand and it looks like a regular tiny beer because his hands are so big. <laughs> no, his his feet are big. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, he's got normal hands. He's got uh, regular little hands and giant. He's got small feet. hands, but they're tough. I mean, they're bigger than yours, but proportionally, they're regular. His feet are disproportionate. He begins to sniff it. Tentatively takes a lick. And then you see him start, the beer start to go up on him because, again, not part of his regular diet and he's heavily tranquilized. Uh, Charlotte, what do you do? Uh, I, think, I think I want to try to, uh, one of my moves as the sleuth is uh, I'm very skilled at crime scene investigation. All right. And I think abduction of a Bigfoot um, is probably that's somewhere. It's probably somewhere on the books. That's a crime. All right. So, so um, I would love to scope out the scene. Try to figure uh, out who, for it. Yeah, for who did this. Okay, so I'm rolling two dice. Uh, mm -hmm. That's a six and a four, plus my brains is a three. Mm -hmm. So 13 altogether. All right, so together. ask me some questions. Because you, you, you can figure this one out before Bigfoot pukes. For sure. Um, Probably with enough uh, time so, to get out of the way. So um, let me just pull up the, uh, the questions here. Just go back to sure. scene. Uh, as a uh, sleuth, I can ask some uh, additional questions here. So I'm going to use some of those. Um, nice. Who is the most obvious suspect? Um, probably whoever fills the beer truck. So someone at the brewery might have put this thing in here. And probably the delivery manifest would probably tell you about where it was supposed to go. Okay. Uh, how many people were involved in the crime? Um, just loading this thing would have taken at least three people. So either a bunch of guys, but at least a few, you know. You also notice that the manifest is, like, legitimate. This beer was supposed to go to a Buck Searcy's used car lot in the city. The, the beer was, and, like, also the crate with the Bigfoot in it? The crate is labeled, um, it's labeled additional materials. Mm. And it's okay. designed to go to the same destination. Uh, my last question, I think, will be, uh, is there anything hidden here? Um, you found it out that they were trying to, someone at the brewery was trying to legally or illegally sell Bigfoot to a used car dealer for a 4th of July event. Okay. Meanwhile, up front, you can hear the, as you, unfortunately, to go up the park, you are, you are now at a 2% grade, uh, Huck, as you head up. And you can hear some loud choppers behind you as you head into um, off ramp five, which oh, is your destination. Shit. Oh man! Yeah, we're gonna need to lose these guys. All right, what are you gonna do? And Dirk, remember, you can help him. You can give him something extra when he helps plan a stunt. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that's uh, that's what's about to happen. We're about to coordinate this uh, this escape here. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Let's see here. Is there a way that I can take a different off ramp that isn't really an off ramp? There <laughs> is. If the answer is, if you append the phrase safely, the answer is no. But no, uh, <laughs> no, I don't mean safely. All right. So I'm what thinking, are you guys yeah, maybe, do? maybe if there's like some conveniently set up. <laughs> Uh, construction equipment yeah, off to the side. Yeah, there's a big, heavy um, scaling station with two minutes left, two huge uh, metal ramps. Oh, yeah, that's perfect. That's the off-ramp we were looking for this whole time. <laughs> yeah. Of course, that'll mean driving uphill through the brush, but the road <clears throat> gators, I mean, who cares that this truck weighs at least several tons? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think we... Uh, if, if we take that ramp, but we maybe skew uh, a little bit closer to the, to the to the left side to the driver's side, so that kind of forces the road gators around us, 
Mm. Um, and then I think I can uh, I can do what what Huck was talking about before: swing my door open, clothesline maybe the first couple, uh, yeah. and maybe try to cause some sort of a pileup. Yeah. All right. What? Well, yeah, I think that's the uh, that's the stunt that we're trying to coordinate here. All right, Huck, roll plus. Um... I'm going to say just plus your hustle because this vehicle was not designed for this. Not made for this at all. But you have something extra. This vehicle oh, okay, cool. was made to traffic Bigfoot. Apparently. Well, I think and that's, that's the additional use. Oh. Oh, it's okay. All right, so that is a nine plus two, so 11. All right. So. You manage to just barely swing out the off ramp. So now the road gators are <laughs> hitting hitting the pavement hard. Oh, I, I also I'm gonna pass Dirk my crowbar and be like, yeah. if you need it. <laughs> there we go. Someone needed a crowbar. Oh, um, you guys had a crowbar this whole time. <laughs> yeah. Grand Funk's been but in the it, back opening the crates with his teeth. I thought that's just like how he likes to open crates. It's a tribute like to George nine. Washington on this special day. <laughs> yeah, so I think you managed our... to get off the ramp. You're now, so the Charlotte, um, Grand Funk, as you try and give the beer to Bigfoot, and he begins to drink it, he begins to puke, and then the vehicle swings hard to the right. <laughs> Bring it in a huge arc around you guys and onto much of the taped up beer. Um, Camille the monkey running for cover. Um, Champ, uh, a citizen, almost gets caught because he's still trying to climb over between the cab oh, no. and the uh, body of the vehicle. Just gets thrown, hits the windshield, um, lands with a bark. And you guys are now kind of driving very slowly up the grass embankment towards uh, the picnic spot. Um, okay, I think if, if, if we're in the back and Bigfoot's like shackled down, yeah. right? He's, he's well, the shackles some way. mostly around the crate. So now some of them are still on there, but most of them were around the container he was in. Okay, I'm, I wanna, I think um, Charlotte is a, like, she has some, you know, qualities from her background that she's like girl next door, hard on her sleeve. So I think she would try to like reach out and help Bigfoot up, like try to communicate, friend, friend. All right, friend. it's currently vomiting. So <laughs> that's okay. I'm gonna pat him on the back. I'm gonna give him a like a slow rub, right, oh. right between the shoulders. All right, uh, roll plus uh, smooth, I guess. Uh, and you get something Bigfoot. extra because of your humble beginnings. That's right. Uh, cool. So I'm rolling something extra. That's an extra die, right? And you, you mm -hmm. keep the top two. And I keep the top two plus my smooth. Great. Yep. Uh, that's a, well, the top two are four and a two, that's six, and smooth is plus two, so that's an eight. All right, so, um, the, the creature looks at you and seems to, like, be fine with it, and then just... Once you guys start going up, he freaks out and starts running over past the secured cargo and uh, jumping out the back door. Bigfoot, no! Be free, my friend. <laughs> anyway, you guys make it to the campground with little difficulty. <laughs> Mo minus one Bigfoot. That I'm, I'm not yeah. even sure if Huck and Dirk knew was there. You guys there. did not see that. You guys, because there was so much <laughs> other stuff going on, you, it's very difficult to explain the stains in the back of the truck. So we'll go yeah, to. Yeah, I want to. Well, I we're, wanna we're hard. parked. Let's get Huck and Dirk uh, caught up on what happened. Yeah, can we can we just like hard cut to like? I swear to you, it was a Bigfoot. It ran off into the woods. <laughs> Look, you've got to believe me, okay? I... I saw it. I saw it with my own eyes. Is there any? Is there any sign apart from vomit and destruction that there was a Bigfoot here? Like there are a lot of <laughs> chains. Yeah. But there are some yeah. a lot of chains. Enormous, yeah. like pukey footprints. Yeah. Well, maybe it was just a really big monkey, you know? Mm -hmm. Maybe it was something like that. Uh, You're a really big monkey. That's not very nice. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> Adds Camille. Camille, don't encourage. Okay. Well, 
now we're we're up here in the cab fighting off these road gators and and I'm inclined to believe that you two are just back here partying off of our supply and trying to feed us this story about Bigfoot? Is that what's happening here? Look, I, you know, I don't I don't make the rules. When I find a Bigfoot, it's my obligation to help a Bigfoot. That's the social contract. I, oh. All right, so people are pulling up to the campgrounds. So they're very confused. Uh, some of them, who, you know, who did you guys invite to this huge party? Uh, I, I mean, we invited the mayor, obviously. The whole, the whole chamber of commerce. All right. Uh, and basically every person that I've ever met. I just, I think I, I think I went around flyering the city and uh just putting up posters and all right so a bunch of college kids have shown up and they're throwing around Mm -hmm. the frisbee i I think we also invited the entire dojo yeah oh yeah definitely and the dojos go up in a minibus and like Uh, important important local business owners Dirk, dirk went through his rolodex and invited a couple of local filmmakers to try and secure his next stunt gig all right so there are imagine that if the people you invited don't enjoy a lot of drinking, about like 10% of them showed up. So there's like 30 people here. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's like people brought grills and stuff like that. And um, we did we did invite Big Jimmy from Big Jimmy's Grill Warehouse. Yeah. Maybe there's Sensei like a- yeah. Tartikoff <laughs> is there. And he he just gestures over you, Dirk, and Grand Funk. Or, sorry, Grand Funk and uh, Mansman. Over to a little park bench near Shady Tree. All right, I'll head over and yeah. see what's up. How did you guys get this vehicle exactly? Says Sensei Tartikoff. We... Well... Uh... <laughs> It's kind of, it's a funny story. Yeah. All right. Um, I love funny stories. Hell it. Well, we needed to get here quickly. And you could have our, thrown it in the city. There are numerous parks there. Uh, but it wouldn't be, uh, it would be illegal there for zoning reasons. So we okay. had. Okay. And explain <laughs> the truck. Well, I was I was working on that. Basically, we were we were on our way here, and uh, we we uh, ran out of gas in our various vehicles, and we had to get to the party in time. So, our our good friend Charlotte showed up in the truck, and uh, you know we all just hopped in and and headed on over, and and I didn't ask too many questions. Righteous. Says Sensei <laughs> in a very unsensei like way and goes over uh, to uh, throw a frisbee. All right. So that actually explains a lot about you guys. Now, and now actually, it's, all, and then it's kind of coming together. Actually, he's much more of a hard ass. This is atypical for him to just let things go, but maybe it's just the 4th of July. Anyway, yeah. Scarlett, um, your mom and dad are here. My my dad's dead, so that would be very. <laughs> well, this is why you that. email me your backstory and don't just let maybe, me. Assume. Maybe it's not on your maybe, character sheet. No, a lot of people think he's my dad, but that's my stepdad. All right, so your Brian, stepdad who wants you to call him dad. Um, yeah. yeah. Sensei he'll, Tartikoff. He'll say dad, but it's actually stepdad. Sensei he, Tartikoff is here. Does he call you Champ a lot and try to throw throw hacky sacks? He calls the dog you? Champ. Yeah, he calls the dog champ, but that's not the dog's name. And it's right, really so the it's really dad, the sticking point. So stepdad Tartikoff comes over. <laughs> Wait, Sensei is your dad? Is your stepdad? Wait, well Yeah, but I don't call him Sensei. More like my oh. stepdad is your sensei. Right, oh, of course. Oh. Hey everybody. <laughs> hey Charlotte, you uh can I get a word with you? <laughs> okay. All right. So kind of uh Tells uh, Huck and Grand Funk to just go um, make sure the grill's being used safely and um, meditate on life's strange directions. And Sensei Tartikoff says, your mom, 
Okay, we know mom's not letting you use the minivan after it crashed into that train that one time. The station wagon, but um stealing beer trucks, Charlotte. Really? Commandeering them. It was for it's for a case. What's the case? The case of the bad the bad weed that killed uh, <laughs> that killed <laughs> Grandma's All right, family. Well, I'm gonna keep this between you and me, but your mother is she's had a hard time and just she wouldn't want you going into degeneracy. So just uh, keep it. Look, it's we already freed a Bigfoot. So, or the Bigfoot. I'm okay. not really certain at this point how many. Super weed and you uh, killed Bigfoot. That's. I didn't kill Bigfoot. We freed Bigfoot. The opposite. We liberated Bigfoot. Yes. Um, look, it's a good, a good detective follows all the leads and all the clues no matter what. It's not my job. It's not my place to pass judgment. I'm just here to solve the case. Okay. And he just walks off. Uh, I go, I, I wish my yeah. dad were here. <laughs> <laughs> you see him raise one finger, but then he just lets it go. <laughs> All right, Dirk. Um, you have pyrotechnician, right? Yes, yes. As a, okay, so as a stuntman, you see that some kids... Local kids are about to set off fireworks in a way that might burn down half the forest. Mm -hmm. um, Which what is do you just gonna do? Like anyway, yeah. um, I'm I'm gonna run uh, run full speed towards them and go, hey, 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 hey! Now you little devils need some of the good stuff. All right, all right, <laughs> and and I I just happen to have this this shiny pyrotechnics kit you're that... a carpet bagger old man hey whoa 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 i've been called a lot of things in my time all right i will not stand to be called a carpet bagger what now about it i am willing to sell you some of these premium pyrotechnics on this joyous occasion for the low low price of fifty dollars that's 200 modern dollars they should have yeah said. <laughs> These are fantastic fireworks. All right, roll. Well, this is getting what you want from someone. Mm -hmm. So, as a pyrotechnician, you're able to correct the fireworks automatically so they don't fail. But ripping off these kids is going to require a roll. Okay. Am I, what, is it plus anything? It's smooth. Okay. That's uh, <laughs> six, seven plus one is eight. All right. They'll give you a hundred dollars. Hey, that works. All right. They managed <laughs> that, to take the money out of the boots. Wait. And you call one of the kids says, I'm going to need ask my dad for some money. You see him go over to one of the road gators. Oh, no. It's just <laughs> one lone road gator. Maybe he wasn't riding today. Who pulls uh, a sweaty pile of 20s out of his uh, saddlebag. Gives why it is it you. sweaty? But well, yeah, why are they so why, sweaty? Why would you keep your money in your bike? <laughs> it's on the this side of the this guy's wild. We get this guy's suspicious. I want to. Uh, I want to pitch a theory to Charlotte about our investigation. Love it. Um, I I come over to you and I'm like, like the big. You know, we saw the Bigfoot. We know it's real. Mm -hmm. But do you think? It, do you think that it could be a person mutated by X Tech weed? I do. I do not think that. <laughs> okay, well, but you know I what? I respect that you think that. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and yes, and me, and uh, but, you know. Uh, but keep going. I want to hear. I want to hear the rest of your, the rest of your theory. I I think that. Well, that was my theory. I think I think that Bigfoot is actually a person mutated by uh, X Tech weed that killed my family. Do you think that your family is actually Bigfoots now? Well, no, they're dead. But <laughs> they, well, maybe they're maybe they're oh, not. I, damn, I never thought about that. Born. Into what big, if, into big feet. All right. What if Bigfoot is actually my calculation does not create a clue. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, what I, I think you I guys think... are getting some recognition uh, from the backwoods fans. Mm -hmm. They're starting to mill around you, but uh, as you guys are kind of occupied, you notice slowly a black and white patrol car coming around the bend. Oh shit! It's oh, the cops. 
Wait, how, how out in the open is the truck right now? Pretty out in the, there's not a lot of places to hide it in the in a public park. Yeah, it's a Dirk, giant Dirk, truck. Quickly, give me, give me like all the pyrotechnics you got. We got to make all a right. smoke screen here, buddy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we uh, yeah, I'm gonna try to try to set up a a little perimeter of smoke bombs around the around the truck. All right, just. And then I'm gonna start to set up Jackie, and I'm gonna kind of set up a stunt to ride through the, or maybe ride. Yeah, let's just get a lot of attention. Maybe even get the cops to chase you. Yeah, could be. You could probably outrun them on the back roads with a yeah. stunt bike. So, um, why don't you roll plus hustle and add your bike's power? Cool. And uh, take one heat because <laughs> distracting the cops gets the attention of the police. <laughs> it's a little tautological, but sure. <laughs> Just because it's tautological doesn't mean it's not true. <laughs> so, that is an eight on the die. Plus four from hustle and power, so twelve. All right, so <laughs> you just see the blue and red cherries just light up as Huck just vrooms through. Uh, Dirk, your crowd, some one of your filmmaker friends, like who's that guy? That guy's good. As uh, he streams out into the woods, um, down past the hills, down past the rolling loam, and over towards Beggars Canyon. Um, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, you've gotten that. Well, there's still the matter of that one road gator. I mean, there's probably no way for him to communicate with the rest of the gang, but. Yeah, there's also Bigfoot, which I'm sure will never come up again. No. <laughs> <laughs> no that's, that's, that's the rule with writing is you introduce a Bigfoot right in Act now, One and wait. nothing happens. Later. Yeah, it's, it's check off Bigfoot, except it's just useless. You don't you you show the Bigfoot and then you just forget about it. You just check off that Bigfoot. And check it's off done. that Bigfoot. That's check very good. <laughs> very Jesus. good. It says use every plot point in the adventure. That's the way to connect them. So yeah, you guys are having a hell of a cookout, but there is. The matter of illegally transported big feet, the biker gang that's after you, the super yeah. weed thing, and the fact that okay. you've now pissed off the sheriff. So, look, Grand Funk, I, I, if you think this is connected to your family, then help me solve it. I think the first thing we need to do is try to. Uh, I, I I grabbed the manifest out of the out of the back of the Gettysburg beer taste the history truck, um, and it's got a, a name on the manifest, and the name is. Oh, Lake. the name of is uh, Leon McElwin Jr. Leon, Leon McElwin Jr. And he owns a used car lot, I understand. Uh, no, Buck Searcy is the, the person oh. it's getting delivered to. Uh, Leon oh. uh, Big Daddy McElwain is the owner of Gettysburg Beer. Oh, okay. So Leon's sending it to Buck. Mm-hmm. So but then again, he's the CEO, so his name is going to be on all the documents. I see. So maybe we should go... You know, pro buck about this if we can track him down all right is, is the there used any car chance? salesman he, he's gonna he's be the at the one. truck lot or you could go over to the gettysburg brewery and uh grill little daddy hmm these are the these are the two names connected to the uh uh the the bigfoot trafficking yep. scenario we've got ourselves embroiled in and that's the those are the two strongest leads we have if we're gonna crack this case we need to investigate i agree let's do it uh, where where do you think we should start? I think we if we go see Buck at the used car lot, we'll uh, we'll All be right. able to. That is like forty miles the other way, whereas the the brewery is like five miles. It's in. Well, this the brewery is five miles <laughs> this <laughs> so, way, so I, I think, think we, we should, should go, go there to the brewery. First, just, <laughs> just as a, in a, from a logistics standpoint. I, that sounds good to me. Let's do it. We can hop in my. Right. Well, well, we don't have my car. Are in Silver Lake in New Jersey. Let's get to New Jersey. Then we can come back. Um, LA. Um, uh, local jokes will get you local work, as, uh, as they say in the business. Huck, Huck has, has distracted the cops. He's driven off. But, yep. uh, but Dirk, you're still with us. Dirk, we need a ride. <laughs> we need a ride? We want to go to the Help? brewery. Man, I, I, you know, I, I mean, I, you I'm, could I... just take the cab because there's no proof of guilt with the. I mean, if you. Got rid of the, brushed up or mudded up the sides. 
it could be any cab. Oh, we we cover the decals. And, yeah, uh, you cover the decals and um, the library with my, you know. Because I was going to say there isn't a whole lot the, of room uh, the, on my motorcycle. Stash all the beer in the woods. The guys here, the, the dojo guys and your friends, are definitely not going to let the police take this all this beer without a fight. Yeah, let's okay. leave the beer with Sensei and um, uh, take the cab over to the brewery. We're going to take the cab, and I'm going to scratch off some letters so it just says, get your beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Tass hiss. Yeah. So now T-A-S-S. we're riding in. Yes. We're riding in the get your beer cab. Okay, so you guys head over to the brewery. There's a big um, there's a big security gate, which is abandoned because there are flyers and streamers that prove that. The guys are at the the loading crew is that's still here is holding a big party as well. Mm. So there's just a gate. Um, Huck, your chase is probably going to lead you into this area where you see the cab and passing yeah. and know where it's going. So you're going to meet up with these guys probably by hop, hopping that fence yeah. in your stunt bike. Yeah. But uh, Funk, uh, Dirk, what are you going to do? Um, I think we need to look for the loading crew and uh, interrogate them. All right, so. with the caveat that they will probably want to interrogate you as well. <laughs> so, how do you get past the gate? It's got a big fence. <laughs> that probably opens from something in the booth. We gotta get, we gotta get into that booth. Yeah, let's let's uh, sneak our way into the booth and try to open the gate. I yeah, assume the booth is beyond do the gate. Quiet. Right? You sneak into the empty booth, hit a bunch of buttons. Well, there's a bunch of buttons there. What do you do? This red, blue, and black. <laughs> I hit all the, all three buttons. All right. The gate opens. The gate closes. And alarm sounds. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna In hit... what order did those things occur? Yeah, That's exactly. The order. Uh, okay. okay. So I hit the first button again so that the gate opens, and then I hit the th- I hit the third button to shut off the alarm. All right. It doesn't shut off from here. Oh well. Oh. Is there an intercom in there? There is an intercom. Uh, I'm just going to grab it and go, uh, sorry, false alarm. It's my first day here. (laughs) It's me. Nelvis, is that you? That is me, Nelvis. Nelvis, you were supposed to go get potato chips. What are you doing in the booth? Oh, I forgot where the potato chips were. All right, I'll Nelvis, go. I'm going to kick your ass. Oh, oh I'm no, right over not here, my ass. guys. Don't, Don't kick, kick it, my though. ass. <laughs> Nelvis, how the hell are you? And then ooh, you guys are going to oh, get I didn't mention that I can be in two places at once also. It's you me, Nelvis. Prick. <laughs> if your mom didn't, wasn't dispatcher, you wouldn't get to work here. I know. <laughs> I also know that because... Because <laughs> I do have Nelvis. <laughs> All right. So you guys drive over to the receiving dock, and you see a bunch of guys yelling at a guy who looks like, frankly, 60% of this chat. Probably 80%. <laughs> just, yeah. just, a, just a white dude with a mustache and glasses. <laughs> yeah. There is um, Johnny Paycheck on the radio. There is uh, Big Flyers and Balloons. That say taste the history seventy seven, um, and um, there's if you look over to the paperwork area, it's clear everything has been tossed and searched through very very recently by very angry people. There's about fifteen guys um, and gals at this party right now, and they all turn when they see the cab because they're used to seeing cabs around here. But when you step out going to cause a problem. What do you guys do? Um, uh, I'm gonna, I think I'll step out. All right. I hope it doesn't cause a problem. And I'm going to say, hey. You and Citizen come out, and they just look a bit confused. Hey, guys, we're from the new um, branch. We're from new, uh, just, uh, just joined the company. Just a small brewery. Uh, get get your get your beer. And I just <laughs> right. That makes it sense. Just got, that makes just sense. Got, 
just got uh, assume just got um, a hostile takeover by Gettysburg beer. Uh, taste the history. And welcome. Well, that is the slogan. Happy to be on the team. All right, you get potato chips. Yeah. Throws you, this, one of the guys throws you some keys. I take the keys. All right. And I, uh, I, I, I let me just run to the bodega around the corner. Yep. Guys, All right. Keep, have keep fun. it up. So happy to be on the team. And as soon as I turn the corner, I like dip back into the try to get into the office with these keys. All right. So um, upstairs, uh, why don't you roll plus uh, brains? Feels like okay. fast a fast talking scheme. All right, cool, cool, cool. Uh, it's a seven on die, plus brains is plus three. Okay. All right, so being super much smarter than basically everyone you meet has the benefit. You now have the keys to a 68 uh, Firebird, and um, you don't know that yet. It just, it's a key ring that's just so fucking fast. <laughs> and has some keys. Um, you come upstairs, you hear... Uh, Big Daddy um, on the phone. You see um, he's got a little round office that's separated from up here. You can see down into the brewery, um, which is deactivated. Obviously, they're not making more beer right now. They sure. figure, you know, the beer that you have July 3rd is the beer you're going to sell for the weekend. Mm -hmm. All right. So so this is Big Daddy. This is this is Leon no, Sr. This is, no, this is Lil Daddy. Oh. Little you Daddy, know, Leon Because he says Jr. there's not a sign. The sign just says Leon Mc McElwain. Well, that seems, that seems, seems confusing. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, that, yeah, it is. But you, <laughs> Big Daddy is not part of this adventure, but Little Daddy's inferiority complex is part of the adventure. Okay, That's cool. I mentioned All right. He's Little Daddy, Leon McElwain Jr. This, is, this yep. appears to be his office, and he's the overseer of this and he is, he is. You hear him on the phone uh, uh, switching between apologizing and yelling to someone on the other end of the line. Okay, I'm gonna, uh, meanwhile, I'm gonna Huck, uh, okay, people it. are just stepping around to the truck because they're confused because they can see that there are still people in there. Mm -hmm. You're not in a force field, so they're just going to – someone right. just knocks on the door. Love Shack, baby. <laughs> uh, say come in yeah I just kind of roll the window down like a little bit <laughs> Huck man's hey. been yeah yeah you a fan the, yeah what are you doing What? How, how, why are you working for get your beer uh, they are paying me a significant amount of money to do what I do best Ride bikes fast and hope I don't die. All right. Well, come on and party with us. Yeah, sure. Why not? All right. I we just kind of kick the door yet. open and pop down, huh? I said I was sorry. Uh, all right. So they're partying. There's like six different types of homemade dips. Ooh. And no, nothing to dip That's into that. <laughs> just dip. But then again, you guys ate at your party, probably. So uh, there's yeah. that. Um, Grand Funk, um, you and Dirk are also in the cab. Um, <clears throat> and we're being confronted by a bunch of uh, uh, Somewhat beer workers, right? Aspirated uh, shipping and receiving uh, team members. Yes. Can I can I just tell the tell the beer workers who want to party with me? I'm like, hey, is it cool if my friends come? Okay. Awesome. <laughs> hey, friends, you can come too. <laughs> hey, thanks. Hey, it's our wrestler. You ain't so tough. My grandpappy says he could kick your ass. Your grandpappy is telling tales, and you know what? <clears throat> I I can take him down with a sleeper hold with the best of any of them. Don't hey, you pappy, get me started. He says, it's that guy you hate, and he wants okay. to fight you. Oh and no! I, see this, I, guy, this guy comes down the stairs. He walks completely past you, Charlie. He was using the bathroom upstairs, and he looks like basically like the most jacked old dude you've ever seen. He's got uh, mud chops, you know, white hair, glasses. He looks like he's a Korean War vet, maybe a war, frankly a World War II war vet. Yeah. And he's got the big red one tattooed over his right bicep. <laughs> He's like, is that that Dirk I don't like? 
Hey, now, whoa, 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 whoa. I, you know, I, I didn't realize your pappy was here. Me? Maybe, wow. I, maybe I was a little bit cavalier. <laughs> All right. Um, we see, uh, Danny, are you seeing uh, Huck Mansman's at the bottom uh, left and right of the video? Is that on your screen? Anyone else? No. No. All right. Well, if that's not in the recording, then I've gone psychotic and we'll continue. It really can be two places at once. Yeah, yeah. That's because I said that earlier. <laughs> He's teleporting. We're just, exactly. we're, just two, we're just two white dudes. Oh, it You're, just turned back into the headphones on. Perfect. Um, yeah. So, Charlotte, you hear him say, and I'll get you that Bigfoot, but I tell you, I'm going to send it. We got my best guys looking for it, and I even hired the road gators to find it. Okay, I open my notebook and I They're write. They're a gang, uh, imbecile. I write Liam McElwain equals connected to Bigfoot? Question <laughs> mark. All right, I'm, I'm sensing. I'm I'm sensing a clue here. All right, yeah, de- <laughs> well, little yes, daddy could sense. be connected to the Using Bigfoot. that brains plus three to take someone's <laughs> confession and tie it into a crime they committed. <laughs> Only the best piloting of that character. Um, what, what I think I uh, I think Charlotte would want to do is try to find um, uh, because this is 1977. Mm-hmm. Uh, try to find another receiver because there's only one phone line and All pick right. it up to listen in on the other side. Technically, of the there are two phone lines, but you do see the the one line in, and you just jump on the call and hear Buck seriously say. I gotta move these pintos. You don't understand. There are so many pintos. And if I can't put my foot down for big savings, which is my slogan, then we will be in trouble. And you won't get the money you need to be mayor. Uh, of Marmot County. Of Marmot County. Uh, little daddy the, clarifies. The mayor of Marmot County. Technically West Elizabeth, the largest city in Marmot County. Mm. Wait, I think uh, okay. I hear, did I just hear a click? Um, and then uh, you just hear a high feminine voice. At, um, um, I should, I, I'm, there's no one else on the line unless there's someone in the office. What do you do? I, uh, uh, I try to imitate Buck and I say, well, that that about wraps it up, I guess. Get, I'm not saying that. that. It's not that. It's you that thing, but, oh, there's some sort of echo on the line. <laughs> so, uh, some, uh, must be a bad connection. What? I, hang, no, up. I hang up. Real hard. Real hard. All right. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, Dirk, this guy has gotten close to you. I mean, you fought bigger people, but not people who, but those people were not trying to battle you. They yeah, they, 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 I'm, all for, I'm all for protecting the business, but they weren't quite real fights on the up and up. Yeah. There was a whole lot of kayfabe going on. Yeah, yeah. It's still real to me, damn it. <laughs> it's still real to me. Um, but <laughs> if, if this is dead and I don't know how to admit it. If, <laughs> if, if this guy is getting closer and closer, I think I might have to just uh, just cut my losses and try to throw hands with him. All right, you can you could get in his face and just try and play on all of your wrestling persona to just cut a promo on him. Yeah, <laughs> you can roll plus Mike to get in someone's face. You have to right. offer a threat of what you're gonna do, but um, I, you will this have Sunday, to do I, I, I have to I have to make like a, a a specific threat or like implicit threat. You have to have something okay. that you're going to do if they push you. All right, all right. I'm gonna say, uh, old man. I know you may have seen some things in the war, but I'll tell you what, it's not going to compare to the hell that I bring down on your head. If you try to go this route right now, my man, you want to tussle with Dirk Thoroughfare and you ain't going to be walking out. You're going to be carried out. All right. So uh, roll plus Mike. All right. It's been a while since I got in anyone's face. That is that is an eight altogether. All right. So you choose one and I choose one from the list. From uh, let's get see, in their face. get in their face. Get in their face. Okay, I'm gonna choose. Um, I'm I'm gonna say they flee. All right. Um, I'm gonna choose. 
Um, they don't try and deceive you, but you do face repercussions, and they force you to carry out your threat. So after a few seconds of just throwing hands with this guy, he's like, whoa, whoa, and he rushes over into the brewery area mm. where you guys hear a loud roar. And that's going to be our first break, folks. We'll be back right <laughs> after this. <laughs> yes. Game Society X is brought to you by Agent Web Development. I liked it so much, I made the company. I like ads so much, I made it the first syllable of my name. But we're back. So, you guys just heard a loud roar from the bottling area. What you going to do? Uh, Grand Funko's charging in. All right. By the yeah. way, you are a vigilante. What's your signature gun? Uh, my signature gun is a is a, a three fifty seven Magnum. Nice. Hand cannon. Yes, sir. All right, so. Um, it seems that Bigfoot, having tasted beer and now hating it, is trying to smash up parts of the plant. Oh. Okay. In, a, in a kind of... Uh, um, cryptozoology, cryptozoological uh, neo-Luddite kind of action. Definitely worth the pause. All right, so. Grand Funk, you might have an angle on this guy. I mean, you always have the angle because you have range and a gun. But you don't know. You haven't put down something this big before, have you? No, I, I definitely have not. Um, but my question is, do I need to put down Bigfoot? Like, is, is I mean, Bigfoot is a threat to the beer, but is he a threat to me? Because I'm, I'm, inclined, I'm inclined to maybe let him do his thing. Mm -hmm. All right. Is that what you're going to do? I think I'm thinking I'm going to take a defensive position and I'm going to watch to make sure if he becomes a threat to me, then, then it's, you know, we got to tussle it out. But uh, if, if he's just crushing up all the beer cause he hates beer, then, you know, that's his prerogative. All also, right. I, I shout, I shout to Dirk and Huck. I told you there was a big foot. All right. So yeah, you guys hear that. What do you do? I feel like Huck and I are just like, we're just like that M&M's Christmas commercial right now. We're just like, <laughs> it does exist. <laughs> just aghast. All right, Charlotte. Um, I, I want to see, does, uh, does little daddy uh, uh, register this? Is he still staying in his office? Um, you hear him I making mean, many other phone calls and you see a phone ring in the receiving area okay uh, and you hear I, a conversation which is probably you guys need to find that stolen truck now or you're fired okay uh, all right and so also what's that noise he's after the bigfoot come in there and mom just forget uh, it it's a beastie boy all right i think i'm gonna go <laughs> i think i'm gonna i think if i if i hear the bigfoot yep uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna head down to the uh the packing right. area to try to uh, he's taking uh, his regular sized but super tough proportionate fists and trying <laughs> to tear uh, off the rubber from the assembly line and then take some of the underlying gears and smash them into the glass tanks or the uh, into the brewing tanks which as someone with brains three I'll tell you for free that's going to cause an explosion you let this yeah. guy loose in a room full of like uh, chemicals and uh, glass and electricity, it's not going to go great. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to um, to calm him down. All right. How do I do that? How how would I go how about that? How do you do that? That's your that's your. I think I think uh, hmm. I think I want to try to get what I want, right? Like I'm yeah. Gonna, this is I'm a smooth to, to, to Yeah, I'm so gonna try to negotiate to with him. All right. I'm going to approach him, hands up, and I'm going to be like, friend, Charlotte, remember? Remember? Your yeah. Uh, roll with the heart on your sleeve. Okay. Uh, so I'm rolling with something extra. Because yep. I have my sleeve and helping a civilian. And I think take a count of a civilian. All right. That's a, the, the top two are sixes. So that's a 12. All plus, right. Uh, plus my soul? Uh, plus smooth. But, Ooh, um, is it two? So I've got fourteen. So he just looks at you confused and awaits further instruction. Um, 
<laughs> uh, okay, I didn't have anything planned for this. Uh, if I succeed, um, listen, Bigfoot, you can run free in the in the hills of Marmot County. The the whole the wilderness can be yours. Leave the beer behind. Make peace and be free. All right. So, just as the receiving team comes in with the uh, mallets and crowbars and implements of necessity, Bigfoot just sprints out the back of the brewery, leaving a lot of people very confused what you said to him. Be free. We must protect the Bigfoot. Be free, my friend. We mu we'll protect so, you. I think Little at Daddy, that point, I'm walking yeah. in to the brewery, finally. Yep. Still not seeing a Bigfoot, and I'm like, <laughs> I don't know, Grand Funk. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm oh, telling God. you, it's real. So a, guy, a short yeah. guy in a tall hat and a seer sucker suit with, um, you know, the red, white, and blue fringes, because this is the 4th of July, comes over, and he's staring at you, Charlotte. He's like, what did you do? Where did it go? It did what you should have done a long time ago. I liberated I, Bigfoot. I don't know what you're talking about, but I'm going to have you strung up for trespassing. Why are you in my... Why are you in my Brewery. Well, we were invited in here. By who? Yeah. By all the workers. It's the 4th of July. It's a time for celebration and independence in America. Also. The Constitution says I have the legal right to be here. <laughs> Not I freedom, 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 <laughs> freedom to trespass. I flex my arm it's to the, show, off, show I, off my flying eagle dojo tattoo. I tell him it's the 18th Amendment that allows us to <laughs> investigate a brewery specifically in, in times of... Uh, he looks very angry and then looks at his receptionist who shakes her head, uh, indicating that this is bullshit. So you have a few seconds before he orders these guys to beat your asses. What do you do? Oh, boy. <laughs> I pull out my pepper spray and I hit him in the face with it. All right. Roll, oh, damn. Ass. Roll plus uh, might. Uh, okay, uh, ooh, not, that's not great for me, but okay, let's do it. Seven minus one is a six. All right, so unfortunately, that thing is just, you gotta, you, you know, you gotta keep those things upgraded, you know? Because <laughs> it sprays him in the face, and he just stares at you, his eyes a tiny bit red. Like you made a big mistake, and then um, the just old Tabasco's brain, the old World War II vet just slams you into the side of a boot. <laughs> He's got a weapon. He's got a grenade. <laughs> oh, wow. And Huck, what are you doing? Uh, Charlotte, you're taking one harm, mm -hmm. and you are now restrained by a freakishly strong old man. Oh no! Huck, um, what are you up to? I think that I am going to turn to who I thought were uh, were my friends. I thought I was friends with all these brewery workers and they're conflicted. They're fans. Yeah. But they're, Come on, they're, guys. They're, 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 paycheck is on the line here. You're Do really going to let this guy over? push you around like this? Does he do this all the time? Just kind of arbitrarily decide on who, who you trespassing? need to beat up? Um, roll plus smooth. Oh, this is going to go great. Yeah, it's a five. All right. <laughs> so one of the guys, one of the small, Nelvis, comes over and says, um, I think this guy's got a point. So hit him. <laughs> Nelvis, <laughs> damn it. If Nelvis likes you, you ain't nothing but trouble. And now the rest of these guys are grabbing you, and you find yourself, like, Loosely tied to an assembly line and like being moved towards one of the bottling machines that's gonna this hit you in the illegal. face with some bottles. Yep. Oh, no. Um, it's gonna hurt you. It's not gonna kill you, but it's gonna hurt a lot. You can get can industrial I bottle. Try yeah. to uh can I try to kind of summon my my chi? Summon some sort of a, a strength and break out of those binds. It'll take you some time to focus your chi because of the sound, yeah. you know, all the al latent alcohol in the air is dulling your senses. Um, <laughs> but you do so. have a pet monkey, so we'll see what's going on in a bit. You do have a pet monkey. Eventually, you will get out. Your training tells you that. 
Uh, I, but I do agree. Grand Funk, you are still in a defensive yeah. position. You haven't done yes. anything since then. So. <clears throat> I would like to fire a wake-up call. When you fire a warning shot to get your target's attention, roll plus hustle. All right. And since you're using a gun to solve a problem as the vigilante, you roll with something extra. So roll nice. it. Nice. Nice. Um, yeah. So I'm going to, I'm just going to be like, everybody stop what you're doing. And I fire my gun into the air. Uh, nice. And that's a nine. What happens on the seven to nine? Uh, on seven to nine, they stop what they're doing. On seven to nine, they stop what they're doing. All right. So there's just silence as you escalate to gunplay. <laughs> Charlotte pulled out spray and just irritated his eyes, slammed into a wall. They're, they're tying Huck down for betraying their trust. And uh, everyone's staring at you. Um, I, uh, I say, I, I shout uh, to the workers, like, get away from them. Everybody step back. All right. Or what? <laughs> uh, I flex my uh, my freedom eagle tattoo, and I say, "You don't want to find out." All right. So this is: Are you willing to beat their asses right now? Yeah, definitely. All right. Then this is getting in their face. Roll plus might. I got an eleven. <laughs> okay. These guys see that you. Um, the only sound is just a womp, 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 womp of Huck slowly being moved down the assembly line in a procession of ow, ow, ow. <laughs> as his seal, as his, uh, you know, impurities are removed and some sanding is applied and a, a label. <laughs> <laughs> Dirk, what are you doing? Uh, I think I'm going to try to, uh, to free Huck from the assembly line. All right. So what's your plan? You're going to have to, um... I mean, it's it's now moving up through the catwalks, so you're gonna uh, have to scurry and go there. Some maybe some of your background as an all star could help you here. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna use some of the agility that I displayed on the field back at Peabody High School. Yep. I'm gonna try to uh, to kind of shimmy along this catwalk and uh, and and lift myself up so that I can that I can try to free his arms. All right, roll plus uh, uh, hustle. Can I get Camille to try to locate the button to stop the machine? Yeah, let's see how Dirk does. Yeah. Uh, oh, boy. <laughs> Plus uh -oh. hustle is a four. All right, so uh -oh. you climb, and you see three familiar buttons, red, blue, and black. You reach <laughs> for the red one, and you hit the blue one, <laughs> causing the thing to speed up tremendously. Oh, no. no Dirk, no. other one, other one. And as you try and reach it, you just... Just you just feel someone grab at the bottom of your shoe and it's the old man. Oh no. Who's left Charlotte alone now just to get back at you. He's called climbing to stuff at you. Uh Huck, do you want roll plus uh smooth to see if you can get Camille to climb and push button? Yeah. Alright. I should let you guys know that this almost never works. Yep. That is a three. <laughs> so pretty All right. good. Camille has taken the opportunity at the unprotected beer and dip to just nope. go crazy with nope. it. Camille, no, Camille. Ah! Button. Ah! Button. Button. Oh my ah! Jesus Christ. All right. Huck, you're going to take another harm as okay. you um, are now sent through the spiral spinner to ensure uh, freshness. <laughs> <laughs> if you want a real if you want a truly deep look at how bottles are manufactured for beer go talk to mark summers charlotte <laughs> what are you doing um Dirk okay looks I, like I, he's gonna get t pulled down to the concrete huck is now up and around the corner uh, so dirt dirt's being grappled and huck yep. is uh, is on the assembly line about yep. to get to the get to the, the rough stuff yeah right yep okay um i think I think I want to use my encyclopedic memory. I think um, if uh, I, I will have read and I, I will call upon my knowledge uh, of, of uh, like bottling plant mechanics. Sure. Like the procedure. Uh, I've, I've read a lot of uh, uh, how it's made before it was sure. a TV show, the original book series. 
uh, how it's made. Nice. Um, so I want to I want to see if I can figure out how to um, change the assembly line to uh, to maybe uh, free free my buddy and uh, and not send him into the 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 heated shrink wrapping area. But to, yeah, uh, that's that one's gonna be the bad part. Yeah, I want to I want to I want to try to detour the assembly line or or uh, uh, cause a backup in some way to break. All right, down. so uh, roll plus brains. Okay. I, I delve into my best. Our experience those who failed in this section, by the way. Don't forget to mark XP on a miss. Ooh, yeah. Uh, all right, plus brain. So ooh, it's close. I got a. I only rolled a five, but my brains are a plus three, so that's an eight. Uh, all right. So you learned something interesting, but not necessarily useful. Okay. Okay. All that's right. Interesting. Um. Catastrophic event failure anywhere in the plant usually stops the assembly line. Which okay. means you're going to need to destroy something. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I can do that. Um, and it will cause additional dangers that causing, you know, explosions might cause. That's cool. I'm, I'm in. Grand, uh, these guys have stopped being scared of you or now are advancing menacingly and trying to surround you. Um. All right. Or at least they're, try they're moving defensively to try and protect the assembly line. They're not trying to get you, but they're trying to stop everyone from getting on and saving Huck. Uh, I want to shoot something uh, that will create will crash the assembly line. Um, what's in the room that I could shoot, theoretically, like uh, that could maybe cause an explosion or something? I mean, there's a big tank. There's some pressure gauges. There's some valves. Uh, yeah, I'm going to shoot one of the big tanks and try to blow it up. All right. Roll plus hustle. Actually, roll plus brains, but do it with something extra because you're using your gun to solve a problem. Because it's not a matter of hitting the, the, the hitting a thing. It's hitting the right thing. Yeah, I got a nine. All right. So, Dirk, you, uh, Huck, you stop moving. <laughs> Right before you get to the shrink wrapping area, so you can mm -hmm. feel the heat in the machine just slow down, go down. Dirk, um, your grip is starting to slip as suds just flow across the entire assembly line, backed up. Oh, no. And it's very hard to keep from falling onto this guy and then onto the concrete 15 feet below. Um, Charlotte, you're fine. Yes. And Funk, your wonderful hair is being sp sprayed by beer. Oh, from a man. tunnel somewhere. I slick it back using the beer as uh, as <laughs> hair hair gel. It doesn't <laughs> it's too liquid. It's not a gel. RT is liquid as a gel. You do <laughs> physics and words. I, uh, I Derek, think what are you up to? Um, I'm gonna try to uh, to look down and aim uh, so that I can use the old man to break my fall. All right. So. Uh, I think yep. Charlotte. Charlotte would. Charlotte's gonna be gonna play wingman here and uh, help a brother out with that. I think I can uh, maybe maybe kick him in in his knee or something to to distract the. Uh, All right, so you're gonna grab the strong man. All right, yeah. yeah. I'm take gonna that. shin kick him so he's. Live force, take that, vets. All right. So. <laughs> Roll plus your bonds with Dirk, which should be a plus one. And uh, since I have a wingman, Roll ability, something extra. I'm Background. I uh, roll something extra. Yep. Nice. Nice. So my like six, seven, eight plus one bond, right? Nine. Yep. All right. So nine. So you'll get involved in the outcome, good or bad. Uh, Dirk, I think this is going to be a mic roll. Okay. Uh, did you take the stuntman move fall from a great height? Uh, I do not. No, I do not have that. <laughs> Doesn't usually come up, but right now it would have been real helpful. <laughs> yeah, it would have been really good. All right, roll plus uh, Mike. Remember, you have something extra from Charlotte helping you. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Uh, okay. So that is cooperate a... to survive in this game sometimes. Sometimes. Actually, Rarely. I, I remembered that I built a support character. Nice. That, is a, that is a 10. All right. So yes. because normally you can't wrench him, but then he's like, hey, my shoe, as Charlotte just grabs one of his like, and he just goes back through a wooden table that says, happy retirement, Gene, 50 years. 
flattering take onto mostly Grand Funk, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And um, I've been splattered with with a lot of things this episode. (laughs) Bigfoot puke, beer, cake. Very messy episode. I'm literally covered in just garbage. I did reference Mark Summers, so. (laughs) It's our secret game master. This is Uh, a physical challenge. Dirk, you're able to you're able to climb back up and free Huck. Yay! And probably take him back down on your shoulder. Um, unfortunately, oh no, hmm. little daddy called the police, um, the local crooked police, as opposed to the uh, you know generally crooked city police. We just say police. These ones are more crooked <laughs> against outsiders, and y'all are outsiders. And uh, you can see one from your vantage point ticketing Huck's uh, bike, which they remember very fondly. Oh, Actually, they're, they're not even going to ticket it. They're putting the block no. on it. No, no. Oh. Uh, can there's I? A big, there's a big wide uh, officer, Sheriff Wardell Allen Drutherford, and his uh, deputy, Righty. And they are asking a lot of questions down below. You have not been seen because they did not expect two people to be up in the catwalks. Okay. But Charlotte yeah. and Grand are um, probably time for you guys to beat a hasty retreat. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to slip out through the suds and the, and the distraction. I'm going to try to, to give, give them a slip. All right. I'm going to say you guys have caused enough distraction that that's not the hardest thing in the world to do. But uh, Dirk, Huck, you guys have a much harder path to the ground. What are you going to do? Uh, from, mm. from the catwalk? Yeah. Oh, man. Can we go around somehow? Is there... It would require some skillful kung fu. Do you have flying cherry blossom technique? Uh, no. Oh, that one made it real easy. All Ooh, right. Yeah. So you're going to have to scamper over the catwalk through past the brewing machine and down to the emergency ladder. Okay. Which one are you just taking the lead here? Uh, I can take the lead on this. All right. Then roll to uh, get out of the way. This is going to be plus uh, hustle. An eight. All right. So you guys have taken too harm. You can spread it amongst each other as you please. As just pant legs get caught on things. There are a lot of scrapes and bruises getting out through the back door. Um can I um can I go ahead and use walk it off, son, to try and to try and heal Huck for some of this? If you want to give two damage to Huck, you can then give him an inspiring speech. Uh, so why don't you yeah. Tell us how you tell him to ignore those scrapes and bruises and blood. So yeah, as we are, as we're kind of you know getting all these little nicks and cuts and and catching our pant legs, I'm gonna I'm gonna look over to Huck and I'm gonna say, "Damn it, Huck! You need to walk this off. All right, you are one of the toughest men this world has ever seen. Now think about think about your training at the Flying Eagle Dojo. All right, you need to channel channel that and work through some of this pain." Because, damn it, I am not going to let my best friend in this world be taken down by a couple of uh, nicks and cuts and bruises. All right, roll plus smooth. And uh, you can now mark experience and move your relationship uh, with Huck up to plus two. Okay. After that stirring admission that he's your best friend. <laughs> uh, three, four, five. Plus smooth is a, is a six. All right. Um... And that oh oh boy well uh-huh. uh, on a six or less it really is a big deal and they take one additional harm. <laughs> oh All shit! Right, Huck, that takes you to five harm. That takes me to five harm. Yep. So you're gonna be you can barely stand as you manage to get through. Yeah. Your leg is definitely fucked up. You'll need yeah. medical attention before you ride that bike anytime soon. So you might need to trust it to somebody to uh, get it back to where you guys are hiding out. 
Well, if if, uh, well, if Puck and Dirk are uh, hobbling out of the uh, of the uh, the brewery warehouse there, yep. uh, I, I think that Charlotte has already slipped out uh, without being seen. And yep. uh, while while these two battered and bruised guys are are walking arm in arm, up pulls the sixty eight Firebird. Mm-hmm. Nice. All right. Yeah, you have the guys. <laughs> So it's easy. Move that. Move up the back. Yeah. Uh, hop in. I'll I'll, uh, I'll slide over, and uh, uh, me and uh, me and Citizen will hop in the back, and I'll leave the driver's seat open for whoever wants to take over this uh, '68 Firebird, which I assume uh, is emblazoned with the slogan "So fucking fast," <laughs> much like the keychain. <laughs> yeah. Dirk, I think you should take it. I can't yeah, drive right yeah. now. Yeah, I'll take it. And I've got uh, when I'm behind the wheel of a vehicle, it gains plus one power and plus one armor because I am Ooh. death proof. All right, you're definitely going to have to escape from the police on this one. All right. <laughs> so why don't you go plus hustle? Uh, me? Yeah. Let's see here. Someone can help you out here. Yeah, can I help him out somehow? Maybe right. I'm like watching out for where the cops are. Yep. Maybe giving him some, yeah. What do you get, Dirk? Uh, that is a six. All right. So, Huck, roll 2d6 plus your relationship to Dirk, which should be a plus two now, if you'd like yeah. to admit that he's your best friend. Yeah. And then Mark XP, which should let you level up after so many misadventures. Oh, boy. What? That's yeah. snake eyes. So that is a four total. All right. So you Not guys great. managed to take it on the road, hit probably 90 on the highway and um by the time you uh manage to find a little roadhouse bar to slide in on you park try and get huck some medical attention and what you don't see on the far side is 16 motorcycles all in a row <laughs> oh boy all right let's take another break we'll be back in two <laughs> minutes everybody Hey, Adam here. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. And if you have, get a friend to. It's like a pyramid scheme, but I don't get any of your money. And we don't make a pyramid. Go forth in July. Anyway, you guys have pulled up to the 225 Roadhouse. Um, Escape the heat to the best of your abilities. But uh, your numerous injuries say that it might be time to find some attention. Medical, that is. Mm-hmm. So he's taking point here, or should I describe the place uh, a little bit more? I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I think I'll maybe I'll head in first and scope it out since I All right. have. Uh, I don't think I have any heat on me. All right, the 225 Roadhouse is a roadside bar that gets its main clientele from local truckers and travelers down Highway 18. Um. So we got the front bar, bar stools, pool table, cigarette machine, mounted buffalo head, a neon Gettysburg beer taste, the history sign, and uh, some of the worst restrooms uh, this side of captivity. And uh, this place is packed. There's a July 4th meal deal going on and a little known uh, act called Dolly Parton performing in about 15 minutes. Mm. Yep. Uh, okay, I uh, and so many bikers at the bar, just all the way around this entire huge bar. Okay, I'm I'm moving very uh, carefully and quietly through the uh, through the bar. Uh, we need to uh, get some uh, get some medical attention for our our buddies here. So, uh, I guess I guess I want to look around and see if there's any any way to accomplish that here. Why don't you scope out the scene? Yeah, let me scope out that scene. Uh, so that's just two of these bad boys, I think. What am I rolling for to go about the scene? Brains. Oh, brains. Oh, I'm great at that. Okay, great. Uh, five plus three. It's an eight. One question. One From the list. question. Uh, 
who knows more than they're letting on? All right. The uh, bartender, he looks like um, he's putting forward a kind of uh, stereotypical Western bartender kind of thing, you know? It's very clean, you know? Patriotic t shirt, trucker cap, back when truckers were the only people who wore them, mm -hmm. and um, little crooked mustache. But you can tell this guy's super intelligent. Just anything you ask him, even like stump or trivia questions, he knows the answer to. You just get a yeah. sense of other smart people around you. And his name is Earless B. Well. Earless B. Well. Yep. Um, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, snag a seat at the end of the bar. All right. And uh, and try and like wave him over. Yep. Hey. Um, uh, look, me and a uh, me and a couple of friends uh, we're, uh, we're we're uh, we're in a rough spot right now, and uh, looking looking to uh, get ourselves patched up. You, you know anybody uh, around here who could uh, you know maybe uh, maybe help get us cleaned up? And well, there up? was there was uh, Doctor Prantis. He's up at that uh, party that those out of towners threw. Apparently the yeah, mayor that's... showed up to that. Some big city mayor showed up. He left though real quick. That's is what I heard from the telephone over yonder. I knew the mayor would be there. What? I knew the mayor would be there. Okay. Um, he uh, takes the med kit um, from back of the wall, and uh, for twenty dollars he'll let you have the run of it if you bring the container back. Okay. Yeah, I give him twenty dollars. All right. He smiles, puts it directly into his pocket, and uh, you're able to heal uh, Huck Mansman for two harm. Huck, I, I came back out and I tossed you the uh, first aid kit. Yep. And then I say, for some reason, uh, he wants the container thanks. back. Well, that way okay. the boss won't ask where the first aid kit went. Oh, it'll just it'll just be back. Yeah. On the wall and empty. Yeah. <laughs> Smart. This um, next song is about a woman I hate who stole my nan. It's called Jolene. <laughs> and you see someone in the back of the bar being, come on, I, we, we've been over this. This woman's just so <laughs> upset. She just storms out into the parking lot. You see a conflicted member of the Road Gators just look after her and then back at the stage and then back and follows her into the parking lot. Okay, I, uh, I circle anyway, up the boys. Yeah, uh, Dirk. Grand Funk, what have you been up to in this? You got like 15 minutes while Charlotte's been inside to uh, figure out a game plan, try and put the puzzle pieces together, or just get to know each other better. Yeah. I, uh, I, I'm leaning towards, I, I think I might free my mind. I think I might uh, maybe um, indulge in, some, in, a, in a forbidden vice, if you will. And uh, and I might use that time to just kind of contemplate the the pickle that we're in. All right, roll plus soul. <clears throat> All right, uh, let's see. that is a seven. All so right. On, on, yeah. Ask a question. I'll give you some kind of answer. Um. Ooh. So, so right now, are are we? I can't remember. Are we on the run from the police? Right, right, right. But also, the road um, didn't want you guys. They wanted the beer. Okay. But if they figure out you were the one driving, they're gonna kick your ass. They might not have been able to see you very well when you pulled the door on them. Right, right, right. I see. But you'd oh, have it, like, you haven't. You ask me a question. You still have the open leads of who's trafficking this super weed? Mm. Um, Buck Searcy and uh, his collection of Pintos, and uh, whether Bigfoot's going to be truly free while these puzzle pieces are still unsolved. Yeah, yeah. I guess. Uh, yeah. Where is uh, wh where's Bigfoot right now? All right. So, if he went back into the woods near the plant, then. It would probably put him far away from the highway, mm -hmm. which means somewhere near 
the picnic grounds, the quarry, or, you know, downtown West Elizabeth, any of those wonderful places. Okay. Okay. Well, you're not able to grab more than that. Grand Funk, what are you up to? You see Dirk smoking weed, which might remind the vigilante of the, the trauma of his dead family. Yeah, I want, I, I'm going to uh, smell the air to see if it, it smells like regular weed or if there's something weird about it. Is it is this super weed? Where do, you get, your, where do weed? you get your hookup? Uh, where do you get your uh, weed hookup? I'm asking the pro wrestler. Oh, oh, uh, you're asking Dirk? Yeah. Um, he, he gets it from an old uh, promoter buddy of his, uh, Samson. Uh, Samson is kind of a down on his luck wrestling promoter, and he's he's taken to uh, trafficking narcotics to make ends meet. Mm -hmm. Well, that sounds like someone who would have access to super weed. Dirk, is there something extra in that in that reefer you're smoking? I mean, it'll make you feel something extra. I'll tell you that much. I, I you know, I've I've only ever smoked the stuff that Samson gives me, but uh, it sure as hell makes me feel a little bit extra. <laughs> Where 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 might I find this, Samson? If I were to uh, inquire, uh, you know, so if if you go down in um, over on uh, over on Lagoon Street, over over right right around the corner from Fred's Dollar Store, uh, that's that's usually where Samson conducts his business. Hmm. And this you, is when Charlotte comes out. So she and Huck commandeer the bench yeah. of the cab, or uh, the, mm -hmm. I guess the front seat of the car, to uh, get going. Thanks, Charlotte. Hope you didn't. Uh, hope you didn't have to ask too much, or hope that, hope he didn't ask too much for this. I mean, yeah, he asked for thirty dollars. So thirty dollars? Are you serious? Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Well, look, I, we had to. You know, your life was on the line, so I went and gave it to him. Well, so if you yeah, want to, we'll, I'll, I'll just take that out of. Or just give me, you tell get, you what, I'll, later, I'll just take that out fine. of. Take that out of what you owe me already. You know. Great. <laughs> yeah. So then we're basically even. Yeah. yeah. Well, cool. no, I mean it was a hundred. <laughs> so well, you would have died. So. so. I could have. <laughs> you know what? We'll call it. We'll call it half. All half. right. Half. Still a thirty-dollar game for Charlotte. Good move. <laughs> all right so with his legs patched up you also have your bike impounded huck yes i do just leaking plot trail how, how do people run an adventure where you're like you go into the next room there are goblins you go into the next room there are trolls when you have so many problems that players create you're just stealing the opportunity of them to make terrible mistakes and yeah, we've made a lot of mistakes yeah. all right time to clean it up uh. all right we so uh, I circle the boys up and I'm like, look, so um, here's what we know. Little Daddy from the brewery captured a Bigfoot and was selling it to Buck, who needs it to move these pintos. I mean, now that Bigfoot is free, uh, you know, he could get recaptured unless we solve this problem once and for all. I think we need to have a go, con go have a conversation with Buck because, you know, God bless America. This is, you know, supply and demand right if we cut off the uh demand we cut off the need for the demand for a bigfoot a captured bigfoot then perhaps he'll truly be free what do they want yeah. a bigfoot to sell the pintos <laughs> i know vaguely uh, that buck searcy is a cowboy tv cowboy who says i put the foot down on high prices this has been his slogan for years okay yeah, I think we should go after this guy and uh, and try to free our best friend Bigfoot for for from his bondage because that's yeah. true Independence Day right there. That's true. Okay. Independence from existence, as the great Bill Paxton once said, mm -hmm. in a in a mistake where they had to re redo it in a gag in a gag reel. Yeah. <laughs> Let's so go. How are you guys going to liberate yeah, Bill car from the uh, police station? That is a great idea. They're probably going to ask for some money, or we could just jack it. I say we steal it. Yeah. 
I, I could I could set up some pyrotechnics to set up a distraction. Yeah, that's a good oh, that's idea. That's a cool idea. Yeah. All right. So you get some of those legal fireworks that you've been keeping on you, you know, mm -hmm. and make your way onto the ridge above the police station. <laughs> Why don't you roll plus brains to see how well you said you, you how much time you buy the rest of the team? Got it. OK. Uh, <laughs> that is a three. Oh, All right. Man. Definitely going to level up this session. So there's that. Yeah, no kidding. Um, you start with two XP as a new player. So let's call that. Oh, OK. Then, OK, then. Yeah, then I've, I've definitely leveled up. All right. You don't blow yourself up, but you just. You take out one of those old man in the mountain style, like geological features. <laughs> <laughs> And it just rolls over the other road so that when you guys escape, there's only going to be one path for them to follow you on for like eight miles. Which makes this escape much harder. Yeah. Um, Huck, the guys rush out of the police station looking at the explosion and both pointing. You notice yeah. that the uh, directly in their eye line is the lockup for impounded vehicles, which is basically just defense. Put over one side of the parking lot. How far away from it are they? Um, thirty feet, maybe a hundred feet. Okay. Is there any way that I can uh, the lockup? Because um, I imagine there's a front gate, and then yep. there's kind of a gate, a fence surrounding it. Yep. Um, is there any way I can kind of come around the other side and scramble up that fence? Um, roll plus hustle. Funk, what are you up to? Uh, I'm going to try to distract these cops that have just come out so we can get the car and get out of here. Well, they're very distracted, to be fair. Um, hmm. Then I want to make a I want to make a beeline directly for the vehicle and uh, try to secure it so we can get gone. All right. So they I put the lock on it. You're going to have to take that thing off. It's this big metal chunk, basically, that prevents the front wheel from moving. I'm going to shoot it with my Magnum. All right. Roll plus hustle. And I got a 12 on the roll. All right. So you are over the fence just in time to see Grand Funk. Um, yeah. He uses pistol, solve a problem. What do you get? I got a, I got a 10. All right. And luckily, it just blows off without damaging the rubber at all. Um, wait, uh, Grand Funk, are you in there with me or were you shooting from far away? No, I like run up to it and just oh, okay. blast it. All right. Um, Put your pistol just gonna... right through the hole in the fence. Nice. All, um, right, so. all right. So I'm going to put you on the other side of the fence then, do you think? Yeah. Or are you like. He's on okay. the other side of the fence. He didn't climb the fence. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm just going to hop on and I'm just going to drive straight through these cops. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So you buzz them. <laughs> With uh, yeah. Grand Funk on the back. Yeah. All right. Dirk and Charlotte, get the get the other car. Uh, Huck, one more uh, roll plus um, hustle, but you get to add the power of your vehicle again. Because yep. you have uh, Jackie. Yeah. The car right under you. Ten. All right. So your guys' luck has definitely turned around. As you buzz these cops, one of them steps on uh, righty, takes his hat down, stomps on it. <laughs> in consternation, having been shown up by city slickers, and does you just slide vehicle in a in a nice swerve around the tumbling rocks. You don't I know why that they're, they're falling from above, but uh, you guys are unobstructed on your way back to uh, Cowboy Buck Searcy's now uh, very very rainy Fourth of July party. <laughs> The mood is, at best, sour. You see the big tents around? Um, Cowboy Bob, the horses are not happy. You know, the, the pony ride for the kids. And this is, is this at the used car lot? This is at the used car lot. I assume that's where you guys are headed next. Yeah, totally. We want to go corner buck. Yep. Um, okay, guys, I think first thing we need to do is get buck on his own. So... Mm -hmm. 
yeah. however that happens. And, and look, I think there's a couple ways this can go down. Either we, uh, you know, corner him and, uh, you know, put the, put some pressure on him to, uh, uh, to, to, to get him to like fold on his need for a big foot or what might be a little more elegant of a solution to figure out how to help him solve his problem. Then he won't need a big foot and everybody wins. Yeah. How good are All you right. guys at selling pintos? <laughs> Beans or cars? I mean, do you have experience in either? <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I had a pinto bean stand when I was a kid, like everyone does. Yeah. <laughs> Your character's Canadian, isn't he? <laughs> He's from Moose Jaw. <laughs> uh, of course he is. All right, so there are a long line of cars for sale, streamers, a sales office, a chicken rotisserie stand, a children's ball pit, American flags, and a massive wall of fireworks. Um, so how do you want to do this, Charlotte? Do you want to just walk up to the guy or, I mean, as far as getting him alone, I don't know, maybe, maybe somebody can, uh, maybe somebody can call his office or we, or we can tell him that he's got a call that he's got to take in the office. Are, yeah. are there a lot of people around or is this mostly empty? It's mostly empty at this point. Okay. I shout, Buck, get on out of here. And then I fire my gun into the air using, <laughs> using wake up call. Roll it. Okay. Also, gain one heat for discharging a firearm in the city. <laughs> I got no heat, so I'm good to go. Wow, I, right. got another, I got another 10. All right. Well, when you fire a gun at someone and tell them to run, often it works. That's a life <laughs> lesson you should have him. To, I told him to get out here. Oh, get out. I thought you said get out of here. No, <laughs> get, out of here. get on out here. He's calling me. Nervously because of what's good. What? 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 Uh, what's going on? Who, who are you? We're here to talk to you about the Bigfoot. I, we don't have the Bigfoot. It never got delivered. Yeah, because it's because he's a he's a person, sort of. Is he a person? Was he always a person before Who he was is mutated? This? You're not like there are kids around here. There's like four kids in the ball pit. You're not you shouldn't be shooting a gun around these guys, especially now with all those fireworks and all those pintos. <laughs> True, pintos are known to be explosive. No, they're not. That's a rumor. These ones they fix that. You, you sure about that? I've, I've seen this exact model. Huck I've blown up this exact model of Pinto. <laughs> no, no, that was a different. They, the, the dealer, the, they, 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 they expect at the factory. And if you disagree, I will sue you for libel. But we're just having a conversation. Okay, then I'll sue you for slander. <laughs> that's not how that works. <laughs> I, I don't know if Huck knows that's not how that works. He's just like, oh, okay. <laughs> it technically is. <laughs> It's kind of how it's close enough to how it works. Um, what do you guys um, do? This guy's clearly um, not a real cowboy. You can tell from the accent. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, once once you hear us out, and uh, why don't well, we go into my it. office if you're going to be threatening me? And you leave that gun with the receptionist. <laughs> That's fine. You didn't I've... give your receptionist a day off on the Fourth of July. What kind of American are you? Ten time and a half. <laughs> That's it. Also, we're married. She has to be here. Wow. <laughs> Where's she gonna go? There's a bunch of imbeciles, and he pulls out this fly. A bunch of imbeciles throwing a big party at thirty miles from here. I I uh, I write down on the back of one of my business cards the number for a, a, a women's shelter. And I hand it to this. I hand it to the receptionist along with the gun. All right, she leans in really close. She has you lean in really close. Slaps you in the face. <laughs> She's happily married to Buck. Yeah, she doesn't mind. You, you guys put the assumption that one, she does not like to work. Two, she does not like Buck. <laughs> and three, she is being forced to be here. <laughs> anyway, yeah, right. yeah you just that get. Gun. Yeah, she has those sharp nails too, but um. You're not going to take any harm from that. Um, so, Cowboy Buck's office has a lot of classic photos of uh, Paramus, New Jersey on it. 
various Greek diners, you know, the uh, shore. It's clear that this is not a public space, you know. This is not the dealer showroom. It's like, what? What happened to my Bigfoot? We, we freed him. Bigfoot's long gone. Bigfoot's gone. How You're did never you come to Bigfoot. procure Bigfoot in the first place? What? How did you come to procure Bigfoot or a Bigfoot? We're still not entirely sure. That's, a, that's contractually private. I'm sorry. It's a business secret. Uh, I want to get in his face and, and tell him, like, listen, we liberated that Bigfoot and you're going to stay away from it. And that's the final that's the final decision here. You understand? All right. You don't have your do you have two guns? Uh, I don't have two guns, but I do have um, uh, feeling lucky punk as my second uh, skill. So what are you threatening to do to him if he doesn't agree? Uh, I'm going to flex my flying eagle tattoo at him and be like, I'll put you in a headlock that you'll never recover from. All right. When you do that, he's just like, oh, oh, you're, uh, you work with Sensei Tarakov. Yeah, I do. I got something that you're going to like. And he just reaches into his desk, pulls out a brown package tied with twine, says, give this to the good Sensei. What what is it? He'll know. Well, how is that something that we're gonna like? That's something Sensei is gonna like. <laughs> oh, and there's, he'll give you twenty. He'll give you a twenty dollar tip. I assume. I don't know how he pays all you guys. Uh, oh, I'll, we I actually open this we package. pay him. But I have an allowance. No. Is this? <laughs> you seem a bit old for allowance, aren't you? In your twenties. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'll, I have a suspicion that this is super weed and. I, I want to open this package and find oh, out. Oh, it is. He just puts it, slams his hand down, which makes you even more suspicious that it is super weed. Son of a bitch. Are you guys, can you, are you guys done in there? We got someone who wants, we got uh, someone who wants to buy 30 Pintos and he won't explain why, but we need you to deal with the paperwork. <laughs> but Says it's for a stunt show. Shit, you, is that my manager? You've been trafficking in this super weed? I uh, don't have to answer that question. Oh, he you got to answer it. put it back in his desk. No, I, <laughs> I, I, uh, I grab him and I'm like, where'd you get this from? Tell me right now. Uh, roll to get in their face. Roll plus might. Yeah, when I successfully get in someone's face, uh, I roll with something extra. Nice. I think after you get in someone's face, you roll something extra. Oh, OK. You can, uh, once you've scared him once, you scare him for good. Gotcha. I got a nine. All right. So you pick one and I pick one. All right. Um, get in someone's face. Get in someone's face. Put that on screen. Where is it? What page is it on? Um, 31. That'd be page two of the thing I sent you. Middle of it. Um... Where is it? I have beat down, smoke, take a hit. Cool. Get in their face. Um, on a seven and nine, choose one. They they give you what you want. That's what I want to know where he got this X Tech super weed. All right. And um, I'm going to pick, they don't try, they offer you an alternative. So they say that the sensei. That karate school was never a real karate school. Obviously, you're not going to make money in the 70s running an American-style martial arts studio. You need to have some fake Eastern thing. So the guy started making money on the side. And uh, obviously, he was a sensei and not a botanist. So he bought some really um, expensive stuff that from uh, some untrustworthy folks uh, down by the docks. Huck, sensei's directly and responsible. Since you don't you don't avoid any repercussions. You just feel the two barrels of a shotgun, uh, no, your own gun, buried into your back from the receptionist. Son of a bitch. I think you were just leaving, she says. Um, hmm. 
I like put my hands up really like I'm, I'm about to surrender. And then I do a, a sick karate spin and try to <laughs> try to American karate style, kick this gun out of her hands. All right. <laughs> Roll plus hustle. If this is a Kung Fu technique on the downside, you're getting shot. So that'll be an embarrassing <laughs> kind of, I got a nine. All right. So I'm rolling real good today. The nine list, which is take something from them on deliver beta, disarm your target. Uh, yeah, I'm going to disarm my target. All right. Um, but you don't avoid any counterattack. So you do... Um, the gun does go <laughs> off, winging you in the shoulder. For How much damage does your gun do? Um, I believe it does two harm. Are you sure the magnum's not three harm? No, yeah, you're right. It is three harm. Oh, All right, three oh, harm. Shit. Ow. <laughs> it is <laughs> big, yeah. You're now holding your gun, and you can't. You also want to hold your other arm because it's now bleeding tremendously right through that muscle tissue. But my, my sweet American style karate backflip was very cool. It was very cool. Was Dirk, cool. what are you doing? <laughs> it's now uh, definitely loud firing this gun in a small office. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Um, can I uh, safely incapacitate Buck's wife so that she's no longer a danger to us? All right. Sounds like deliver a beatdown. Roll plus might. <laughs> a very safe beatdown. Uh, I mean, you're working. You can work. You can work loose. You can work tight. <laughs> there you go. It's all a work, brother. All right. Uh, let's see here. Plus might. Yep. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Four. All right. So you slam her. Into right into like a, a one of those chairs, uh, which starts moving, and then as she's trying to get you, it starts tumbling backwards down the stairs. Dirt <laughs> man, what the hell? Bloody pile, and um, a bunch of children who were going to the bathroom staring up at you. Oh, <laughs> they had heard uh, the gunshot and wanted to know what's going on. So you gave me. Kids didn't know you'd see a wrestling show today, did you? She's not moving. <laughs> I know. She's a great. She's really good. <laughs> just it's, called, it's called Sally. Right. Charlotte, Charlotte and Huck. Buck seriously is using this opportunity to try and get out the window. Right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab him. All right. Yeah. And res I'm, I'm going to restrain him. All right. Roll plus might. Oh, I'm... I'm I'm doing like a kung fu sort of grab. Oh, okay. Then yeah. roll plus hustle. Hmm. <laughs> can I can I help out? <laughs> All right. That's yeah, a, you uh, can you can try and grab us. I, I think uh, I think uh, citizen is with us. And we, All right. I, I tell him to you know to to fetch basically or whatever the command is to yeah. like fight at him. Okay. Uh, so I'm rolling two. No, I'm rolling with something extra. Nice. I think. Yeah. All right. That's a 10. For All right. Around. So, Hawk, you get to roll one more die and keep the top two. Cool. He's here. Don't get this. Ooh, nice. So, so, so it's nine. Let's do uh, 11. All right. So. You managed to, see he's about to get to the window and push it open when the dog drags him back and now you're Kung Fu gripping him. Yeah, and I'm, uh, I'm going to use the thousand points of silence. Nice. Um, and so, uh, they are paralyzed until the end of the scene unless I release them. All right. So he's just stuck in his chair due to your Kung Fu uh, yeah. chicanery. Like, what um, was that I screaming? <laughs> Uh, Can you get Penelope back in here? Who's that saying this? Uh, Buck is. Oh, he's thinking he can still talk, so I can question. Yeah, yeah. That was going to be my question. Okay. Um. Uh, first, you have to answer some questions for us. Um. Look, we need to know about this super weed. This thing goes way deeper than you possibly could realize and you yourself might be in danger. I uh -huh. mean, the mayor is in on it, the, um, the uh, little daddy, your partner in crime, little daddy, who thinks he can get you a uh, Bigfoot. Uh, that I mean, might be unrelated, to be fair. 
Those two might be two unrelated criminal enterprises I'm involved with. But he's, he's built anything deep with the road gators. Yeah. They're trouble. Um, and uh, further to it all, this 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 super weed is so dangerous. It's called hyper weed. Hyper weed. This hyper weed is even more dangerous than super weed. It's, it's the one same level. Thing. You guys it's one level more dangerous. It's, it's pretty much the pintos of weed. Yeah. Oh, that's terrible. No, that means a lot of people are in danger. All right. Look, we'll uh, we're, we'll leave you out of it. Good. Your foot's gone, and you, and if you get yourself clean of this uh, of this hyper weed, then you got nothing to worry about. You need All to right. tell us. You need to tell us who's responsible for this uh, this hyper weed in death. I just told you. Like before, just, he did just tell us. He got it from the doc work from the docs. Yeah, the I sen- get it from the it's sensei. The sensei? It from the docs. Yeah. Then why are you giving it back to the sensei? He's uh, doing a. Wait. You gave it to us. Wait, I don't know how drug dealing works. All right. No. You gave it to us. Oh, I remember. I remember. Penelope takes care of some of the, the logistics of this. If you can uh, mm-hmm. unparalyze my arm, I can go through my files. I uh, I give you a nod. Why don't, you, why don't you tell me where the files are, and I'll go through them. I, or, I, 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 they're either here, here, or over there. And he looks with his eyes. Okay. Look, just one arm. Okay, this is my left hand. All right. All right. Oh, so he pulls out the files and he says, "Oh yeah, um, we move them in the, the trunks of the cars. The tr- the cars that nobody's buying can move a lot of uh, drugs around town. So uh, if I didn't move all these pintos, um, I was supposed to put all the stuff I have in one of the cars." But since they're moving pretty well, no thanks to you guys, um, I was just supposed to give back the extra and he would uh, distribute it again. Huck, we got to stop Sensei from and, distributing and the hyper And would you like to apologize to these people? <laughs> and? We should, yeah, we should probably should go and uh, talk to him, right? Or we could just and, go right to the docks. Uh, I think Sensei, well, he's getting it from them and distributing it. So I think we gotta we gotta shut him down first. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've had a lot to say to my stepdad, and I'm ready to do Man. it now. <laughs> we should try to we should try to get back to the party, and we should round up Dirk? first. Dirk, everyone else the from the dojo, guy, right? Uh, yeah, but go get my uh, wife in here, please. Uh, she is indisposed <laughs> at the moment, uh, through no fault of our own. She may have slipped, uh, but she is okay. Okay. Well, that's good. Sorry about pulling a gun on you, but you can understand that, you know, you had previously threatened me. So it was a reasonable, and he fired a gun in the middle of my, uh, place of business, so. I don't think it well, apologies side of it. I mean, I Listen, yeah. most of my problems are solved using my gun, so I understand how you would feel the same. Get the fuck out of my office. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That's a fair response. All right, let's go get Sensei. Yeah. Now, I think if we're going to do this, he's probably going to sick the rest of the dojo on us. I think we should tell all the other students first. That's just me. Yeah, it's a good plan. Well, uh, well, well, they're all at the party, right? Like the whole dojo went to the well, party. Well, that was so. several hours ago. That's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're at the after party now. Oh man, where was the after party? So many oh. parties today. It was. It was yeah. at the. Thankfully, it was at the dojo, so we just have to go there. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, the rain's coming down in sleet. So you guys uh, head over to the dojo. It's kind of in a redeveloping part of town, by which I mean parts of it are bombed out <laughs> right in the dead heart district of the city. Um, what some of the lore from the book is that the guy who was building the city, who was the architect had a nervous breakdown as he was trying to put all the street grids together. So the city literally makes you crazy as you go deeper and deeper into it. <laughs> it's a labyrinth of a city. It's a labyrinth okay. with yeah. one way things that don't go anywhere, you know? The non Euclidean roundabouts. City. Yeah. <laughs> Empty Escher design. Oh, no, you guys city. take a left turn from Euclid Street onto Euclid Street and arrive at the dojo. <laughs> <laughs> All um, um, so that's um, 
What do you do? I mean, there's there's a, a party going on inside. Um, on the downside, it seems that um, there's uh, a lot of people from a lot of different dojos in here partying because most of the senseis, you can sell the ones that are from our dojos because they're in street clothes. Um, it turns out most senseis don't let their students get drunk and party on the 4th of July, or at least don't officially sanction that. Like the tea house of the hidden dragon does not do that. <laughs> Flying so eagles a lot of a kind of Joe. Yep. I don't know, Grand so, Funk. What do you think? We got it. I thought I played Sensei Eric suspiciously high. By the way, I thought it was pretty clear that he was oh, super stoned and frisbee. easygoing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because he played frisbee. Because he was there for. He was four. playing frisbee. He forgave you guys really easily, and he was forgetting things that he had told you. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, back. we're not the most observant people, so... No. Um, I think it's time... Are we... We're outside the dojo? Yeah, there's parking across the street. I think it's time that I fire my gun in the air. <laughs> 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 it's how I solve, like, every problem with this. All right, so as you fire your gun in the air, there's a crack of lightning and nobody notices. Damn it. Um, all right. Uh, they're ha they're ha they are having like a party though, right? Yeah, it's like a party. Yeah, I want to go up to the DJ. Uh, I want to go up to the DJ and commandeer the uh, the microphone. All right, we got a special dedication from Grand Funk. Uh, I saw your name on the wall, kid, and uh, he's got something special to say on the Fourth of July. We're gonna keep it spinning. Grand Funk is all you. Uh, I grab the microphone and I say, "My fellow Dojo members, listen, I've I've." Uh, and I throw the the package of hyper weed uh, onto the ground, and I say, "I've I've got on good authority that Sensei has been trafficking in the hyper weed that, as you all know, killed my family." Because <laughs> I talk about it constantly, so everyone knows. Um, and we have to rise up and defeat Sensei before this hyper weed kills any more people in our community. All right, who's with Rope plus me? Plus smooth. Rope plus smooth. From the back, I just kind of yell, it turns people into Bigfoot. <laughs> God damn, I rolled a 13. All nice. right, so a lot of the other students are in on it. Oh, no. But yeah, that makes sense. But, yeah, I, that makes yeah. sense. The other people who are all honorable karate fighters decide that this is the excuse they always needed to beat the shit out of your friends and comrades. And grab, <laughs> there are nunchucks, they go to the practice swords, the, the, the bows, everything. It's just, uh, you know, it's it was a little bit frightening. <laughs> but, <laughs> but they fight with expert timing. <laughs> they are Milton Bradley karate fighters. Yes. <laughs> Sponsored joke. All right, Charlotte. Well, um, how can, you're kind of you you feel at home in this melee, Dirk? You've wrestled before, you yeah. know. You've been in a, a, a battle royal or two, but for oh, yeah. Charlotte, this is just a tremendous amount of violence that's almost incomprehensible in in mm -hmm. um, swiftness and technical accuracy. Yeah, uh, he, uh, where's the big boss? Where, where's um, the sensei? Or he, as I know him. Kevin. Your stepdad, Kevin. <laughs> Kevin Tartikoff. Uh -huh. Not the guy who created Saved by the Bell. That was no Brandon relation to Brandon. Off. Yeah. Um He just he when he heard the speech, he just ran to the back. Oh, I'm me and, he tried to me pull and that, Citizen. Uh, all right, so you were gonna try and right, right, okay, so pursuing him. You're, you and Citizen are chasing your stepdad through the rain-soaked back alleys. It's like, it's a misunderstanding. I don't know. That's an accusation. You know, like, does, just because he had weed doesn't prove that I was distributing weed. You have to understand. <laughs> like, you're a very smart girl. Your mom and I, um, and he's just trying to throw boxes and anything he can behind you. As, as soon as he mentions my mom, I get, like, a burst of speed. I'm closing in on her. <laughs> All right, roll plus hustle. Okay. Not great hustle, but let's see. I rolled a five. All right. I'll see you at home. <laughs> Just, <laughs> he, he clambers up. This guy is a skilled DJ, so he jumps up a wall, goes down to a fire escape, 
And as you try and climb up it, it just collapses into like powder. <clears throat> this will be awkward, wow. but you know he does stay over sometimes. So <laughs> awkward. Okay. Uh, uh, can I still see him? Uh, yeah, just as he fades out into the rain, there's just a flash of lightning, and then he's you can't see him again. I, 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 uh, I, from from the ankle holster that I have, I do pull my uh, my dad's uh, 38 revolver service pistol, and mm-hmm. like lying on the ground in the rain, <laughs> I like I like I'm, I'm I'm ready to take the shot, and then I can't do it. My fire gun in the air, <laughs> all screaming. You guys hear gunfire from outside. And then thunder, but uh, funk, Dirk, Huck, sounds like a swore. <laughs> I uh, so so you what said you, you said some of the dojo members are in on it, right? So they're not going to take too kindly to us. Yeah, the uh, the uh, eagle dojo members they're they're most all in on it. Sure, I think um, I'm going to fire a Roman candle into one of the groups of dojo <laughs> members that are in on it. All right. Uh, this is the first time anyone's really attacked at range, oddly enough. So you're going to smoke their ass. And roll plus hustle. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then I – do I – let me see. I guess my, my professional pyrotechnic skill, I uh, – yeah, that just means it won't detonate prematurely. Okay. Yep. So roll plus hustle, you said? Yep. <laughs> Let's see. That is a six. All right. Are either of the two of you helping out with this plan? Um, <clears throat> I don't know how I can necessarily help out with the pyrotechnics. Well, he's about to shoot some fireworks in a crowded dojo. What do you? It's certainly something you can do to help or hinder his efforts. Um, I think I'm, I'm going to try to. Um, I'm probably jumping between opponents in a way, yep. and I'm kind of trying to corral them almost. Yep. All right. Um, yeah. Roll plus uh, your bond. Eight. Oh. All right. So, Dirk, you get to roll one more die and keep the best two. All right. Okay, so that is a uh, that's an eleven. All right, so you managed. You're about to light things off. You just aim it, and then you just before you take out one of the support pillars of the building, because there's a lot of wood in these dojo. You just huff, just kind of moves aside. You make the perfect switch and fire into a crowd of people who are sent running by the loud noises and uh, moderate heat of fireworks. <laughs> Which, you know, is probably more ancient Chinese um, technique that's ever been used in this hall before. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Funk, what are you up to? These guys are real close. It's going to be hard to get that gun in there. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think I'm, uh, I'm going to jump down and join the Kung Fu and, and uh, try to beat some ass. All right, roll plus uh, hustle. I rolled uh, a 10. All right, so you are kicking some ass. Your side is slowly winning. Um, what are you going to do when you win? Uh, I'm going to uh, interrogate the the members who are in on it and find out uh, where, where Sensei uh, hides out since he's escaped. All right, so Zhao Lane, um, who is... Um, a Chinese national who moved to America and now takes karate in the American style. It's like, I, that's, um, what was your question, Funk? Tell me where Sensei's hiding out. I know he's a, he got away. His back office? Wait, really? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I took the back office. Tell me part of the job is we move the drugs. He does not say where his secret hideout is. Probably then- for security reasons. Where did the drugs come from? From the docks? Yeah. Um, Pittsburgh. We got to shut. We got to. I, I, I turn to the others and I say, we got to either shut this drug drug uh, empire down or we need to hunt down Sensei and get it, get, get more uh, information from him. What do you think? 
Well, if there's a back office and he's been smuggling drugs, I think that counts as a crime scene, right? That does. I would like to investigate his office. All right. You're uh, soaking using, wet. Don't touch too many documents. Using my magnifying glass. All right. Uh, okay. So I'm scoping out the scene of the crime, which I think is rolling plus brains, right? Mm -hmm. It's not, it's not great. Does anybody want to help me out? Um, what did you get? Uh, I got a, well, I rolled a four plus three brains is a seven. All right. So I guess that's not, I get one question, uh, and I can additionally choose to ask these questions. Um, uh, okay. Let me, let, me, let me have a look at these questions. Let's go back to see uh, I, I would say, is there anything hidden here? I think would tell me the most information. Um, there is a map of the chi of the human body. Um, it's clearly an Americanized version of it because it's like one of those, you know, those purple and it's pink. mostly in the dick. It's mostly most of the chi is in the dick. <laughs> That's just facts. I mean, this isn't an educational <laughs> video podcast. But um, you notice that these, when put so, uh, against a map of the city, it's actually a drug supply chart. Cool. It's the rooting of the city, and it's in it's in plain sight. So it, it maps the, the flow of the, of yep. the product in, in the city? Through the, in through the mouth, out through the lungs. Yeah. Not for the dick. Yeah. <laughs> Just like oxygen. Yeah. She is stored in the balls. Everybody knows that. Well, yeah. My parents watch these. All right. So, <laughs> armed with that information, what are you guys going to do about it? Where's the, uh, the center? Where does it originate? Yeah, where's the from? source? Um, have any of you guys played um the adventure that starts in the supermarket yeah i did all right it's out of uh what used to be a supermarket uh down on the west side Ooh. that's probably where he's headed mm -hmm. either to cover his tracks Loopner's or grocery stuff. store what's it called loopners 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 all right, I say we head to the grocery store and yeah. finish this. Finish this yeah. once and for all. Yeah, let's, let's get him. All right. So, the store is closed. The lights are off. Oh, we leave. All right. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> okay. Well. Whatever. All right. That game is <laughs> closed. Great game, everyone. Oh, you guys. We should come back tomorrow when they're open. <laughs> all right. So you come back the next day. You see Sensei Eric shopping for produce. <laughs> no, he's in there. It's just that the lights aren't on. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Fucking Twitter. All we right. can see him lighten up some of that hyperweed. Yeah. I I would after a night like that. <laughs> yeah. It's been a stressful night. Mm -hmm. Um is is it locked? Can we just walk right in? Um Can we kick the doors open? Can I kick the yeah. lock? The all possible. What which of the <laughs> two you do? I put the lock pick on my foot and <laughs> <laughs> and kick it directly into the lock, which unlocks it. <laughs> Power lock picking. Roundhouse pick. All right. Roundhouse <laughs> pick. Roundhouse pick, very good. Uh, I mean, I, I was thinking that me and Grand Funk just kind of both kick the doors open at the same time. And there's like a really cool shot of that with the rain and the lightning. Yep. Yeah, for sure. That sounds pretty awesome. We're trying to wait for the lightning to like, oh, back so light up. We're yeah. all waiting yeah. like, yeah. 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 Kind of like five, like, mm -hmm. four, three, <laughs> two, kaboom! <laughs> now, um, yeah, Sensei, uh, stepdad, uh, Tartikoff is uh, in the produce section, lighting up uh, some uh, cabbage, as it were, <laughs> hyper cabbage. Some of the devil's cabbage. Yep, some of the devil's cabbage. <laughs> Um, I shout at him, Sensei, you killed my family with your hyperweed. <laughs> you, what? Killed my, you killed my family metaphorically with, you, with your presence. 
That's I not. Did. Let's not do this here. You kind of, you kind of killed my family because the dojo is my family, and you made it all fucked up. I, I just think you're kind of a dick. <laughs> so we've all got problems. <laughs> yeah, you guys should probably just figure out one reason, and uh, I'll come, I'll come back later. Okay. <laughs> is he trying to leave? Yeah, he's just slowly walking back. No, I just sprint right uh, at him and try to tackle yeah. him. All right, roll plus. Uh, I think you guys are definitely teaming up on him. So two people, uh, one person can help you out here, Grand Funk. Um, all right, who wants I'll help? help yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Good, because I rolled a five. <laughs> <laughs> You're a tough guy, though, right? Oh, nice. It's so a ten plus one, eleven. All right, so you have to roll one more die, Grand Funk. And if it's cool. a two or better, should help you out. It was a seven. All right. So on a seven, pick one from the deliver beatdown list. Let's see. Deliver a beatdown. Um, um, I will uh, avoid counterattack. All right. So you managed, you two managed to fight him to a standstill. And uh, he lets out a whistle, and a bunch of uh, mob thugs stream in through the back door. They're clearly we're in the middle of a poker game. They do not know what's going on, but they see you guys, and they're just angry. Uh, One little of them has the visor. Yeah. <laughs> um, can I? They came. I, I'm thinking specifically of the Ralphs that's right near me, but yep. usually by the back door, there's like these shelves of discount stuff. Yep. I'm going to knock that shelf down. All right. Hit him with the day old bagels. Yeah. Um, all right. This is still deliver a beatdown, and I don't know if that's a kung fu technique. Um, it's the way of the way of the bagel. The way of the bagel. <laughs> yeah. Cream cheese fist. <laughs> You're right. I'm not sure if it's a kung fu technique. Yeah. So that is a seven. All right. Oh, sorry, eight. Same thing. All right. Pick one from the list. You can deal your damage or any of those other fine options. Let's see here. Deal stun harm, disarm, blind hold, or otherwise disable mm -hmm. your target. Give or take something, push, pull, or otherwise move your target where you want them. Um, I want to deal one stun harm, I think. All right, so you get grazed by a bullet for one harm, but okay. uh, these guys are blocked in. They're just going to take some time for them to figure things out again. Uh, Charlotte. Um, geez, okay. I, uh, not Your stepdad looks like he's going to retreat, climb up one of the shelves and retreat through the skylight. Uh, I can't have that. So... Um... Uh, I, you know what? I don't, I don't, I don't know what else to do besides try to, uh, try to, try to go after him. All right. Maybe it's time. Yeah. Maybe I need to, uh, well, here's a question. If I, I don't think I should shoot to kill. Mm -hmm. so maybe I can wound him. Sure. You can shoot to wound. I think I'm ready to do that. I'm going to shoot to wound. I think, right. I think it's, I'm ready to, uh, smoke his ass. Go for it. So I'm rolling plus hostile, which is zero yep. for me. So let's risk it. Four, five, six, seven plus zero, seven. All right. So um, you can either graze him or uh, deal your damage, but have to move to get your shot, exposing someone, often yourself to danger. Uh, so either it's a, one, it's just it's, it's just damage. a graze. Yeah. So it's just one harm, or I expose myself. Yeah. Hmm. 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 Two harms uh, been taken down at this point. I think I. Uh, wait, you're saying two harm? Yeah, we'll two harm. Down? We'll take him yeah, down. Yeah, I think I think uh, I think Charlotte, if I'm being true, would risk herself. She's All she's right. a bold actor. So, so uh, I'll position. deal. I deal two damage, two harm from my 38, from my dad's 38 revolver, uh, but I have to move to get my shot, exposing someone, often myself, to danger. All right, so 
as you take your shot, you notice that um, blue and red cherry lights in the parking lot. Your dad fall. Your stepdad falls down backwards into a shopping cart, <laughs> wounded in the leg. And uh, as you just see a sheriff Rutherford, Rutherford come out of the grocery store with the mob on one side of you and the cops on the other. You say, man, am I beast bounding down? <laughs> what? And that's the event. <laughs> it doesn't always fit. It's very hard sometimes to get it into a sentence. <laughs> But it is one of those 70s cliffhanger endings that they never know. Yeah, it's it's an extremely weird 70s ending. Yeah. I say, hey, I shoot him and he falls in the shopping cart and say, hey, check that out. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) That's an on point with the puns. And I say, uh, right before I pull the trigger, I say, time to make this count. (laughs) (laughs) You're you're very good at this. No, wait, no. We skipped the most obvious one, one, which is. Clean up on aisle too. Yeah, yeah of yeah. course. But, uh, no, I, but I say clean up on aisle scumbag. Holster my fist. How about coupons aren't the only thing I'm gonna clip? <laughs> <laughs> How about oh, that's for Bigfoot? I have to shoot him. There's no safe way. <laughs> Stop or my mom will shop. <laughs> wow. Just keep going. We're on a roll here.